Are you blessed in the name of the Lord? Father, thank you. Are dear people of prayer, this is an encounter conference. You're crying for the spirit of revelation. Thank you, Jesus. Let your word come with power to change, to lift, to transform in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please, you may be seated. I take very seriously every opportunity that I have to teach and to challenge God's people because I have come to learn from scripture and even by experience that the only way believers mature, the only way they grow is through the sound teaching of the word of God. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 says, I will give you shepherds or pastors after my heart. And the Bible says that they will feed you with knowledge, they will feed you with understanding. So, when believers are exposed to the word of God, they are empowered to number one, reflect Christ in experience. Please pay attention. Number two, they are empowered with the tools that make them walk in victory experientially. It is one thing to know the potentials that are captured in the word of God as far as the victory of the believer is concerned. But we must learn the ways of God that can make that victory written here to become a reality in my life and in your life. Are we together now? I have always challenged believers that in addition to conforming to the image and the character of the Christ, it is important that believers make progress in their lives that you are able to look at your life and know that you are moving from one level to the other psychologically speaking one of the indices that measure fulfillment is progress if and when you are unable to make constructive progress sooner or later you will be frustrated are we together so a conference like this is designed to help us and to lift us to remind us to renew our understanding to challenge us along the lines of new thoughts and um, i like for us to pay attention it will be a brief session tonight but i pray that it will be a meaningful one in the name of jesus christ two things very quickly generally there are two factors responsible for transformation it is called your teachability index number one is your willingness to learn and number two is your willingness to change these two factors are very important and they are responsible for the rate of transformation of any individual a measure of your ability to learn and your ability to change if you have a very high rate of your ability your passion to learn you are going to become very knowledgeable but if you do not have a passion to change, you will become like the people in scripture who are ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. And I can tell you, based on the authority of God's word, it is very frustrating to know what should be, and yet not enter into the experience of it. It says, now that you know these things, happy are you if you do them. Hallelujah. So as we hear the word of God, it is important that we are very intentional about number one, learning, and then number two, to allow the word of God permeate our spirits and to permeate our minds, our thinking, to challenge our philosophies and our ideas about life. Until we change and we sustain the mind of Christ, we will never be able to experience the realities that befit the mind of Christ. The Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Are we together? Yes. I just thought to say that because sometimes, um, especially in conferences like this, we can get very casual about the truths that come 
and we just open up our hearts for the sake of the ritual of reception with no intention to really receive it as a word from God and to be transformed. It is my um, plea, therefore, lending my voice with your pastor and the leaders in this great ministry that we open up our hearts today very and, and be very intentional that the word that is coming is not just for for um, awareness it is coming from God to a man to me to enlighten me and then to empower me to move to my next level if that is true for you shout Amen, amen. Hallelujah praise the name of the Lord and then while seated I like to speak over your life and then we'll pray as a way of um, starting this my discussion proper Isaiah 54 and verse 17 I'm interested in the A part Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17 no weapon that is fashioned against you shall prosper please say amen. amen let me repeat it one more time that in the name of Jesus no weapon that is formed or fashioned against you shall prosper while seated can you turn it into a prayer in one minute that i decree and declare in this season go ahead and pray this is a believing church decree and declare no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper no weapon fashioned no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper. No arsenal of darkness against my destiny, my advancement in this kingdom and this life will prosper. Fortified by the word of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Luke chapter 8 You are about to learn something tonight that I believe for many of us will be the bridge from the season where you are to the next season of your life and destiny in the name of Jesus. I truly believe with all my heart that as you open up your heart to learn finally the Spirit of God will connect the dots for you and you will make maximum kingdom advancement even after tonight. Luke chapter 8 and I'll start my reading from verse 22. Luke 8, 22. Now it came to pass. You can look up his projector if you can see it. Now it came to pass on a certain day. Right. That he went into a ship. The he being Jesus. With his disciples. And he said unto them. Let us go over onto the other side of the lake and the bible says they launched forth uh-huh next verse but as they sailed he fell asleep and there came down a storm of wind on the lake and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy 24 and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water and they ceased and there was a calm and he said unto them where is your faith and they being afraid wondered saying unto one another what manner of man is this for he commanded even the winds and the water and they obey him we'll pause here please go back to verse 22 the Bible lets us know that this is a very interesting, you know, a, a very interesting story. The Bible says it was on a certain day. So we know that this is not a parable. It happened a certain day. That Jesus came to the ship with his disciples. Before this time, he had made tremendous progress preaching the gospel holding his crusades, doing mighty and great things, miracles, signs and wonders. And he desired that they go to the other side. So you must understand how the story starts. The story starts with a desire to go over to the other side. Are we together now? 
And then the Bible says they launched forth with that motivation that he intended to go to the other side so that they could experience his power, his grace, his salvation. But then the Bible says that as they sojourned, certain things began to happen. Jesus lay to rest and there was a storm of wind. And there was a storm of wind. The first thing I want to say tonight is that there are times when challenges prove to you that you are getting it right. It is not always true that every challenge you face may be a proof that you are getting it wrong. The Bible says here that it was because of their desire to go to the other side. That means if they did not take the step to go to the other side, there would be no issue of storms at all. Hallelujah. There are times that the challenges and the storms that we face in our lives, it may not be true that they are because we have backslidden or because we have not trusted God enough. In fact, many times those challenges come to prove that we are making progress in life. You would think that because Jesus was in the boat, a storm would not arise. Jesus did not join them. He started the journey with them. Yet the storm still came. If the storm came for Jesus, it means it should not be unusual when storms come over believers. They did not ask him to join them when the storm started. He started the journey with them. In fact, he proposed the journey. The all-knowing God, the all-seeing God, now as a man, and proposes a journey did he not factor the fact where was his vision where was his ability to see the end from the beginning the song seems to have taken them by surprise they came to him and they said we are disappointed you are jesus where was the grace that saw nathaniel under a tree that now we are on a journey and we are faced with a storm many times just because god told you that you will go this way and you will be great. When you face challenges, most of us turn back as though the voice of God were supposed to magically exempt you from storms. The Bible here is teaching us, are we making progress now? The Bible is teaching us that even Jesus was not immune to the presence of storms. If the storm came with Jesus in the boat, then the storm can come with, to end making progress. Lord, why is this happening to me? Why is my business failing? Why am I not excelling in ministry? And we begin to ask these questions and the devil buys into our emotions to make us believe that we did not hear God. And, and, you know, believers have a very interesting way of making people feel that whatever challenges that they have before them is proof that they did not hear well. Sometimes challenges are proof that you heard well. Are we together? So, they began their journey as proposed by Jesus himself. Let us go over to the other side. And the Bible says there was a storm of wind. Please look up. A storm is made up of um, two dimensions or two elements, if I would use that expression. Number one is water. Number two is wind. Please pay attention. It is the wind that powers the water to be boisterous. You may not be able to see the wind, but you can see the effect of the wind in whatever happens with the water. Are we together? Now, that means that every storm has two sides to it. There is the water that you can see, the obvious problem that you are blaming. But there is a wind that you cannot see that is empowering that water. Are we together now? So that the issue is not just a rent issue. The issue is not just a business issue. The issue is not just your boss. The issue is not just your relatives. Oh, Joseph, the issue is not just the well. The issue is not just your brothers. That every storm is made of water and wind. 
physical or visible and invisible so in confronting storms you are already in error if you focus only on the water are we together now the first thing in addressing because it, this scripture here is teaching us that it is not unusual to have storms but it is also teaching us how to triumph over storms that in dealing with storms you do not start with water when jesus managed the storm he started by rebuking the wind the force that powers the water are you getting what i'm teaching you now the simple but powerful teaching because you see satan is the master of the sense realm and he knows that for as long as he keeps creating men and situations they will distract you and you may not know that he is the force behind it you will point fingers at individuals and the individuals may have legitimate blames but that behind every storm the real reason why the water is boisterous is the wind the water is only a slave to the wind the boss may only be a slave to a spiritual manifestation somewhere this is why the bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood is god speaking to us now that every time you are approaching issues of life and destiny your first port of call should be the realm of the spirit if you route it by any other agency you will fail every storm is made of wind and water please say after me wind and water so just when the lord tells you he's ready to manifest his power and glory over your life you begin to have a misunderstanding with your wife that you cannot understand where it is coming from and where it is going to that is water there is a wind that is powering that spiritual men don't just talk physically they know that what is happening is as a result of destiny the moment you begin to find confusion around your life, it is proof that the realm of the spirit has, they have heard that you are going forward. Let us go over to the other side. The Bible says, John chapter 10 and verse 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill and to destroy. Look at me. That means before the thief comes, he vets whether there is something worth killing, what stealing that means the presence of the thief is proof you are that valuable now please understand this the thief has no business being in a place until there is treasure enough to steal treasure enough to kill and treasure enough to destroy could it be that his insistence over your destiny is proof that you are not even aware of what god placed in your own life Satan can be used as a confirmation that you are valuable. Are you learning tonight? So, let us go over to the other side in business. Let us go over to the other side in ministry. The other side as far as my pursuit for God and the things of the Spirit are concerned. And you begin that journey and here comes the storm. The storm is made of wind. Oh man of God, hear this. This may be a word for you. Oh businessman, hear this. This may be a word for you. The storm is not proof that your spiritual life has gone down. Don't let the devil lie to you. The storm, the quarrel in your home right now, it, it's not proof that you are not faithful. It's not proof. Many times it is because the devil wants to distract you so that you will go back. I can tell you if they made up their minds to go back, the storm would cease. The same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. Whether you go back or go forward, it will still take energy. We're dealing with Luke 8 now. And then the interesting thing is that the Bible says Jesus was sleeping. You don't want a savior to be sleeping during a storm you want a savior to be alive but jesus was sleeping 
and you would thought you, you, you would think that um, as, as boys terrors as the storm was it, it will wake him up Jesus was still sleeping that means listen this is very powerful the Bible says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus why will Jesus be sleeping in a boat that is raging left right and center he did not wake up he was sleeping it took them waking him to say master care us not that we perish because he knew for sure that he would not perish are we together now they never said jesus wake up your life is in danger they said we, we there is something about your mentality that even the storm does not affect you we know you are 45 you have your thinking you have a mindset that would not allow storms to move you but help us have mercy on us we are still trying to grow can i tell you this there is a lesson here for everyone to learn two people were in the same storm one sleeping the other one shouting let this mind be in you sometimes you see people rejoice and praise the lord until you hear what they are rejoicing over they are rejoicing over pain they are rejoicing over disappointment the man can be singing and clapping and there are bills to the billions to pay he has received a mentality that god god's god's jealousy defends him and that there will be a way the end will be victory this is how we think in the kingdom please understand this we live in a world that is very passionate about attracting sympathy and sometimes we we tend to believe that just because we have justifiable reasons to feel bad we can throw away everything and blame everybody and get angry people do foolish things in society and justify it why did you steal well there's poverty in the country why are you not serious well there is no job but jesus had a mentality this is the second thing i want us to learn the first is about the reality of storms that it happens to all men including jesus and then number two there was a mentality that jesus had even in the midst of the storm he was asleep that looks to me like the scripture that says though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil now here's the secret for thou art with me it didn't say for thou art talking to me there are times that you don't have to wait for the storm to be calm to rejoice just verify if jesus is there the moment jesus is there in the boat begin to find rest you can fail alone but you and jesus cannot fail together if you are the only one in the boat even if you are a skilled man at sea begin to be afraid but if you check that boat and you verify that jesus is there even if he's sleeping or seems to be sleeping find rest the first reason why we find rest in this kingdom is not because the storm is over it is because jesus is in the boat oh this is this is a prophetic word to someone right now i may not know how the solution will come i may not know what to do i'm i'm in the middle of nowhere i began a journey to start a business and now i'm in debt to the millions and the billions and it was because of my desire to go to the other side the other side of my destiny i can't remain at this level for the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light there are many people who do not have storms it's not necessarily a proof of spirituality it's proof that they are so cowardly they don't have the courage to go to the other side are we learning now it takes courage a storm must must be sure that you are worth its attention to come to you now learn this lesson number one storms happen to all men including jesus it is not unusual one of the scriptures that baffled me for many years is this statement in revelation and there was war in heaven 
war in heaven. Heaven is your throne. With the all-seeing eye, omniscient, omnipresent, there was still war in heaven. Notice the character of God in both cases. God never stood up from his throne because of the war. He was still seated at rest. There was already a system put in place. Listen, learn this. Rest is proof of faith. Rest is proof of faith. You may need to prophesy to yourself. Say, myself, find rest. Myself, find rest. The Bible says, except the Lord built a house, they labor in vain that built it. Except the Lord watches over a city, said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early and to sleep late at night, only to eat the bread of sorrow. But he gives his beloved sleep. Are we together? So there is a mentality that was in Jesus that I'm proposing to us. Every time you seem to not have control over the issues in your life, forget about the issues and verify in that boat, is Jesus there? He can be there as the prophetic word he gave you. He can be there as the word of God that you hold on to. Are we together now? Yes. This home, now it's three years, five years, six years, we're trusting God for children and it looks like children are not forthcoming. That is a storm. It was a desire to raise a generation of prophets and apostles who will frontier the kingdom. Now a storm has come and all kinds of naysayers will be around you trying to discourage you to say go back. Remember what I told you, the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue. Jesus had a mentality. He was so at rest. And they tapped him and said, Master, carest thou not that we perish. Please give us the scripture. Verse, that will be verse 23 or 24. Luke chapter 8, verse 23 or 24. Luke chapter 8. Master, he says, carest thou not that we perish and the bible says do you know the bible says verse 24 is the verse and they came to him and awoke him saying master master we perish then he arose jesus Never told them one word until the storm was over. He didn't say, gentlemen, how are you just become? No, he turned to the wind. Not the water. Jesus addresses storms by starting with the wind. The spirit, the force from the realm of the spirit that brings that storm. And he said, peace, another synoptic account says, be still. And there was a great calm. And then he now turned to the people and said, Now that I'm done with the storm, let me teach you something. Where is your faith? He turns to the wind. Like someone is going to turn to the wind this night. That it is time for me to move forward. And thou storm that is standing before me manipulating things acting as though it's a financial problem acting as though it's a marriage problem acting as though it's a health problem just when they say you are about to be promoted you touch yourself and it looks like there is a growth somewhere and the devil starts telling you cancer so this is how you are going to die that is a storm it is not the swelling there is a spirit there is a way that we deal with storms jesus is giving us a lecture that you deal with storms by rebuking the wind. You only rebuke what is alive. You don't rebuke what is dead. That means the wind had life and it could hear. The force that is behind the tragedy, the force that is behind, that is forcing an impedance to your journey can hear. And if you know how to speak as a priest, that storm can be calm. You don't have to bother about the water. 
Let the wind seize its influence and the water will come back to normal. So the issue is not just a financial problem. The issue is not just a marital problem. The issue is not just job. The issue is not just your destiny help us forgetting you. There is wind that is making the water to be boisterous. But imagine the labor they would have gone to trying to look for a container to fetch the water out one by one one imagine you are trying to fetch it out and it's coming into the boat again it would have killed them there that's how many of us try to manage challenges now jesus is teaching us a lesson here that for every storm please pay attention there is wind and there is water and that you can stand in the name of jesus christ and take authority over the wind and you go to your office by the next day and the same boss who vowed that you must leave this office comes to you and says you know i've been thinking about you where did you say you come from and now you know that that is water without the influence of the wind now are we together now verse 25 Jesus said to them, verse 25 now, Where is your faith? We we'll continue our reading. And being afraid, they wondered, saying to one another, I'm reading from KJV, What manner of man is this? For he commanded even the winds and water, and they obeyed him. The Bible now says, They proceeded with their journey. Verse 26. The Bible says, And they arrived. Say, I must arrive. Oh, in spite of the storm, the Bible says they arrived. Just stop there. Don't rush. We are dealing with this is scripture. This is good news. That regardless what they met on the way, the final thing is that they and I prospered. And I went forward. Your story is not complete until this is captured in the glory. So, when you are telling me about the challenges, I'm interested, but not as interested as this. I want to know, did you have the same power to arrive? Someone prophesy, say, I arrive. Say, I arrive. Hallelujah, I arrive. Financially, that, that destination, I arrive in the name of Jesus. You may laugh at me because you are watching the storm, but it's not over. I arrive in the name of Jesus. I arrive. I arrive. Regardless the naysayers. I arrive by the power of the Holy Spirit. In ministry, I make progress. I arrive. Financially, I arrive. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. I arrive. Not only me, my family will also arrive. Please sit down. And they arrived. How many of them arrived? All those who started. Not some. Let me use this to prophesy to someone. There will be no loss. When you started this journey, you started with your spiritual life. Your finances. Everything that started with you will also arrive. You will not leave your spiritual life in the boat. You will not fall by the wayside. Just because you want to make progress. Don't lose your spiritual life. Don't lose your finances. Don't lose your relationships. Don't lose your courage. Everything that started that journey should arrive also. He didn't say, and he arrived. And they. And my children arrived. And my company arrived. And ministry arrived. And my spiritual life arrived. Yes, I came from a family of idol worship, but I made up my mind to go to the other side. And, and on my way, for 10 years, I made captivity, but I still... Turn it into a prayer in one minute. The grace that makes a man arrive. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're going to be seated, but I'd like you to pray. I just felt that this is a place to declare. The grace, I arrive. I arrive. This one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press onto, towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. I arrive. I arrive.
I didn't start the journey to die in the sea. I didn't start the journey to bow to storms. I didn't start the journey ministry to bow to pressure. I didn't start the journey to bow to status quo. I started intending to arrive. And until I see the other side, I am not yet there. There was a level of the anointing when I began my pursuit for God. You are praying. Hallelujah. Please look up. Hear me. Until you can see the other side, don't stop moving. I arrived does not mean I stopped when I was tired. I arrived does not mean I stopped because time was going. I arrived means I finally saw physically what was in my spirit when I started. Are we learning? Please sit down. Let's finish up that scripture. I'm just walking you through these scriptures. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes which is over against Galilee. Now, next verse. <laughs> and when he went forth to the land, there met him out of a city a certain man. Now, you would think that when he was done with storms, he would never meet any again. As soon as he arrived the new level, it was not the prime minister who came to greet him. As soon as he arrived there, he was a madman who stood there and the Bible says he had devils long time and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in tombs. My first question is who told the madman there were people coming from the other side? I, I can perceive a relationship between the storm and the demons in this man. That as soon as he arrives, he meets the madman who is also like the water and the wind. In this case, the man being the water, the wind being the spirit that had kept him bound for a long time. Follow the discourse. Next verse, please. And the Bible says, and when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell before him and with a loud voice said, what have, you, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. 29. For he had commanded the unclean spirit. You see the formula again? Not the man. Every time you see storms, whether in human forms, whether in whatever, the approach is the spirit first. Jesus did not reply the man like he did not reply the men. He did not reply the water. He went straight to the wind, the spirit component in that situation. And the Bible says he rebuked, he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Then the Bible gives us added information that for all times it had caught him. And he was kept bound with chains and in fetters. And he broke the bands and was driven of them of the devils into the wilderness uh-huh and jesus asked him now that he was free saying okay he's giving us an information what is thy name and he said legion because many devils were entered into him watch this and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep 32 watch this it says and there was there a herd of many swine feeding where on the mountain leave that for another day and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter them and he suffered them the word suffer means permit and the bible says and when the devils went out of the man they entered into the swine and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and were choked and they that fed them saw what was done and fled and went and told it in the city and in the country read on then they went out to see what was done and came to jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed sitting at the feet of jesus clothed and in his so what kind of mind did he have before because the Bible says that he was sitting in his right mind. 
and they were afraid. 36. They also which saw it told them by the means that he was possessed of the devil was healed. The means that he was possessed of the devil was healed. Next verse. I want to bring out a powerful lesson here. Now watch this. Then the whole multitude of the country of the gatherings round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. 38. Now, the man of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away with an instruction. What was the instruction? 39. Return to thy house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way, watch this, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done to him. Jesus said, now that we've done this, let's return back. So why did they really start the journey? All the storms to free one man who was equal to ten cities. Now, it's very interesting when you study scripture that many times you would see Jesus preach in a large crusade. Then he would be with one person investing the same passion. That means in the mind of Jesus, he looks at things from a destiny dimension. That that one man was the evangelist anointed. Now, from hindsight, let's reverse the story. Story, story. Once upon a land called Gadara. Once upon a time, a land called Gadara. God intending to invade that land decided to invest his dream in a man and satan knowing that that man could save the city now turned that man he made he, he he started attacking the background of that man and eventually the evangelist that was anointed to save ten cities was staying in tombs with no clothes are you getting it now jesus intending to save the gatherings had to inconvenience himself to move to the other side the spirits knowing that salvation was coming they did not see jesus they did not see the disciples they saw salvation coming not to the man to the city hold on do you notice that there were certain people that suffered as a result of that salvation that meant that they were prospering because of the bondage in the land. The moment the spirit went out, some people's businesses went down. Oh dear. There were people who their prosperity was because there was no salvation in that land. The economy was rising because the purposes of God were bound. As soon as the man was released, the spirit and those in allegiance to it went down. No other person went down in that city. And Jesus intending to save his city. Could it be that the reason why Jesus also has been intentional about your destiny is because as he looks at you, he's not seeing you. He's seen a 90-year-old prayer that someone from your family prayed as a missionary and said, Oh God, raise somebody from this family who will wipe the tears of everyone. Raise somebody from this region. And Jesus has come in honor to that prayer. Whenever you think it is about you, look beyond you. Whenever you think the attack is about you, look beyond you. Whenever you think the salvation is about you, look beyond you. Every time God comes to you, He comes to you because of the destinies connected to you. Every time Satan comes to you, He comes to you because of the destinies connected to you. There are attacks that have no business happening to you if you were not connected to the kind of destiny you are connected to. The attacks have nothing to do with you. Don't take them personal. Satan is fighting many people through you. That's why the attack looks fierce. 
if it was about you, he would not waste his time on you. He looked at you, madam, and he saw an evangelist. He looked at you and he saw a prophet. He looked at you and he saw a kingdom financier. And he said, instead of attacking one million people, let's stop this woman from having a child. Let's stop this one from going forward. Is someone learning now? This is giving us spiritual intelligence as believers so that we can interpret things from the lens of the spirit, from the lens of prophecy, from the lens of destiny. Now you can rejoice in the office and they may not know why. This woman who has been insulted by everybody, why is it that the more they insult you, the more you rejoice? Tell them I came to House on the Rock and I heard a word by the spirit that corrected my understanding. Number one, that storms happen to all men and storms are very Verification systems that you are really going to the other side. If you did not intend to grow, you will not meet with the challenges. Even Jesus, Jesus and his presence in the boat did not stop the manifestation of the storm. It only stopped the dominion of the storm on the journey. The next thing that I, that I taught you that you need to have at heart is the mind of Christ. There is a mentality that makes men rest in the midst of storms. Can I tell you this? The Bible says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. It says, For thou art with me. That divine presence should be a consolation. Someone declares, Say, You are with me. Thou art with me. Thou art with me in the midst of the storm. And then when Jesus woke up, the Bible says, He rebuked the wind and the storm was calm. So the first way we address storms is to rebuke the wind. Next time go to your shop, go to your mall, Go to your business, go to your house. You come back and you see your children bringing reports that are not consistent with the word of God. Just kicking and venting anger on the children will not solve the problem. Always remember, Jesus has taught you what to do with storms. It is not the result. It is not the school. It is not the dull child. Remember, Satan does not attack for nothing. In that child as CEO, in that child is the employment of 5,000 people. Don't blame the innocent child and bring ill-spoken Ill words over him. You are a failure, you are dull. No! Satan does not attack failures. If you were a Satan, you will not attack failures. That's a waste of time. The Bible says he knows his time is short. So if Satan can handpick people, out of 7 billion people, when he listed people, you were there. You need to verify what parameter he used. And I've already told you, John 10.10, 10, that he only comes when he finds out there is something worth stealing, something worth killing, and something worth destroying. So you can go back and dance in the midst of storms. And they ask you why. You say, number one, the storm has verified that I am valuable. Number two, the storm has verified that in me there are nations. It is better to forget your paddle than to forget Jesus in the boat. Because if it is to calm storms, you don't need skills. You need Jesus. You need skills to move. But there are times that your skills cannot continue the journey. You will need Jesus. There are times that whatever knowledge you have may not be able to continue with you. It is Jesus. And then remember that in your praise and your rest, there is prophecy that you will arrive. Oh, powerful scripture. And they And they arrived. And they arrived. Even if it's after 10 years, they arrived. Apostle, I've not gotten admission for the past 5-10 years. I bring you a word of hope. 
while you are talking about admission, prophecy is already saying you are right. Apostle, as I'm speaking right now, there is no place for me to stay. I mean, this church just laughing, but the Lord is waiting for me at home right about now. I may not know what storms you will face, but I can tell you this. If Jesus is in the boat, rejoice. Look up. Let me teach you something. One plus one, mathematically, is two. Is that true? One plus one, demonically, is anything less than two. Because Satan does not add. One plus one plus Satan cannot be two. Even if it's not zero, it cannot be two. Because Satan does not add. One plus one plus Jesus is equal to the answer he puts there. The moment you add Jesus to the equation, the answer is no longer scientific. The answer is no longer economic. The answer is, is no longer mathematics. It is the answer he puts there. So he can take 10 years of delay plus 2 years of being raised by a single mom plus 15 years of unemployment plus Jesus and he can put one year of victory that is equal to 30 years. Five years of a wayward life plus two years of limited understanding in church plus a job that may not give you so much plus your passion and fire for God then plus Jesus and you will be surprised see what the answer will be. The answer will be the destiny of someone who started working hard from four years and you say this is not fair and he says Jesus not, does not only add he can supplement anything plus Jesus is the answer he puts there. Let me tell you something. We are wrapping up. There is a very interesting parable I wish I had the time to deal with in scripture. It was the parable about employment. The Bible says a vine owner was drawing people to get into his field. Have you read that, that parable? And he negotiated for a denary with certain people early in the morning. Is that true? So their basis for going to the field was not because they loved the vine owner. It was because they negotiated for a denary. He took them to the field. Later on, he saw some others and said, Why sittest thou idle? They said, No man employ us. And he said, Go. They didn't negotiate. They went because of love and honor to the man. Even at the eleventh hour, one hour to the close of work, he still met another. He said, go. At the end of it, he paid those who came because they wanted payment. Then those who came because they believed him, he said, now let me decide how to pay you. He paid them the same amount. And they said, no, there is injustice here. And Jesus said, what is the injustice? I know you came from a lineage of millionaires. I know you came from a lineage of those who bless you. And maybe that may be your motivation for loving Jesus. It was not really because you loved him. It was because there was an opportunity. You were told that if you stay with him, he can bless you. Oh dear spiritual employee, you go to the vineyard. Your dinner is coming. But then there are others who said, Lord, if you can make any sense out of this life. My, my background has cheated me already. And he said, also come and join. And when it is time for payment, when he's allocating graces and possibilities, he can bring the grace to one. Oh dear. I'm saying this prophetically because there are people after this conference. You will stand side by side with those who started being diligent even before you were born again. And they will wonder and say, but this is not fair. And you will tell them, the problem is not me. The problem is the one who carried me along in his boat. Jesus Christ, being in your boat, can make the difference. And they arrived. And they arrived. And they arrived. And he met the man at Gadara. 
rebuked the spirit out of that man. And the man said, I want to follow you back. He said, no, I came because of you. Now that I'm done with you, I can release you to live out your assignment now. Listen to me. Victory over storms has a purpose to it. The purpose is that Jesus be revealed and that Jesus be glorified. When the storms that have attempted to impede your progress are over, let it not be that when you have built houses and cars and everything, you say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this. He says, but thou shalt remember. That means you can forget. I brought a simple message, but a powerful one tonight. Because everybody here under the sound of my voice, if there is no storm before you now, I can tell you it is proof that you have not yet made a decision to go to the other side. But if it is the other side of business, the other side of your spiritual life, the other side of your kingdom exploit, the other side in me, then there is a storm that is before you. Here is my advice. Check that Jesus is in the boat before the storm comes. The storm will not respect you. It will only respect Jesus who is in that boat. As you carry your certificate, verify whether Jesus is there. As you carry your track record of business exploits, realize that there will come, dear Peter, where your net may not be able to catch fish. If your net does not catch fish, it is not, it is not laziness. There are times that the fish will not come. You will need Jesus. It is only Jesus who can tell the fish to come. Some of you are in this situation right now. You've exhausted everything you know to do intellectually, spiritually, economically, etc. And you are right now in a confused position, not knowing what to do. Number one, find rest. Storms happen to everybody, even Jesus. Number two, have the mind of Christ. You know that Jesus is in the boat, so find rest, it will not kill you. There is an end. Number three, have the mind of Christ. Superior understanding. Superior understanding that Satan is a master of the sense realm. He will manipulate you into depression. And then you will find out that the challenge, every challenge comes in its inflated form. It takes rest, the rest of faith to deflate it down. Sometimes you will worry over things that are not as serious as they look. And then Jesus taught us how to deal with storms. That you speak over the wind and say in the name of Jesus, this wind making my marriage boisterous, this wind making my academics boisterous, my job, my business, this wind making Nigeria boisterous, this wind making my political career, my ministerial calling boisterous, he is shalom, be still. And the Bible says the wind and even the water obey him. And then obtain the same power to continue until you arrive. And when you arrive, remember that the arrival has a purpose. Don't dive and begin to celebrate and forget that there is a madman who holds the salvation of ten cities waiting. Could it be that the reason why God wants to prosper you is so that you can meet a child someday, pay that child's school fees, who will be the owner of a bank tomorrow? Annoy 5,000 people. Can I tell you this? Every time you see the madman in Gadara, look beyond not being clothed. Every time you see a madman in Gadara, they will not come to you as great people. They will come to you as people with their fields. They will come to you as people who are outcasts. 
they will come needing you. It is amazing that on the other side of your success, the first person you meet is the destiny sent to you. You must have the discernment to not allow the beauty of success be cloud you. As a man of God, when God grants you an anointing after the storms, the attacks, and now you come to a position of power and influence, do not forget. For every arrival, there is a madman crying. Businessmen, for every arrival, there is a madman crying. He's holding the destiny of ten cities. Some of you have arrived. And all you are doing at the seashore is a party a celebration. And there are madmen crying and saying, is this not why you came? Did he anoint you to just do church? Man of God, now that you have arrived in a measure, what are you doing with that anointing? I am doing ministry. Ministry, I am enjoying myself. Wake up! There is a madman who is waiting for you. There is the young man who you need to lift in ministry who will be strengthened and go and save his family and save other generations. Please hear me. We are wrapping up, but you have to get this lesson. For everyone who arrives, and it's a language we like to use in Nigeria, I have... Let me tell you the next assignment. Look for the madman in Ghana. When you arrive, it's proof that you conquered the storm. So we celebrate you for beating the storm hands down but realize every time you arrive your next assignment is to locate the madman in gadara for the sake of the gatherings rise up on your feet please we're going to pray just three prayer points tonight. Prayer point number one will be that God would grant us the strength to have the resilience, to have the stamina and the staying power to continue when the storms of life come. I wish I would tell you storms would not, not, not come, but I would be lying to you. If you want to get to the throne, the pathway is the cross. Oh Joseph, if you want to speak with Pharaoh, be ready to enter the well, go to the prison. I said it in a teaching somewhere that the prison is where both good and bad people meet. Every time you see people in the prison, be careful because Joseph is there too. Not everybody is a criminal. Every time you see men on the cross, be careful Jesus is there too. He is just between two thieves. He may not be a thief. This is already a word for someone. Don't generalize people. You may see Joseph in the prison. But not everybody got there because of a crime of their own. You may see men hanging on various crosses. Don't generalize. Jesus is dead. He's not dying for himself. He's dying for the world. There are thieves that pay the price for their own foolishness. But there are others who are dying for others. You must have the grace to discern. Are you ready to pray? Prayer point number one. Lord, I obtain grace that as I start this journey to the other side, regardless the storms that come, I will arrive. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Shapra gata baka tuska te prende gete belegeta. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I am determined to go to the other side spiritually. I am determined to go to the other side financially. I am determined to go to the other side investing. Regardless the storms that I face, I declare that I intend to arrive. Jesus is with me.
Are you praying? Obtain grace. Though I walk through the valley low, I'll feel no evil. By the water still my, my heart will trust in you, Lord. My heart will trust. Someone is drawing strength for the journey tonight. So I walk through the valley, Lord, I'll be Look at me. We are wrapping up. Please lend me your attention, everyone. Following and here. Someday you will need to move from being a tenant to a landlord. It is not prophecy. You will have to go to the other side. Someday you would have to take responsibility and raise those children. Everybody has another side to your story. Do not be afraid of making progress to the other side. I can tell you one thing for sure, the other side is not a bed of roses. Faith, they say, does not just make things easy, it makes things possible. The assignment of faith is not to make your journey easy. That is the assignment of favor. The assignment of faith is to make your journey possible. Someday! You have to make up your mind that I'm tired of begging and borrowing. Listen, I have to go to the other side financially. It will take courage. Let us go to the other side. Tell your mind, let us go to the other side. Tell your spiritual life, let us go to the other side. A day will have to come, you look at your wife and say, My dear, he called us to ministry. Thank God for the level we are operating now. But there is need to go to the other side. I can't be the one depending on people to give me money all the time. And I keep praying for others to prosper so they take me. I can't be the man of God sitting in jealousy and pain and watching God use others. It is time to go to the other side. Listen to me. For someone here, this is a prophetic word. You have encompassed this mountain long enough. Stop celebrating mediocrity as a local champion. It's time to stretch to the other side. Can I tell you this? Don't be so emotionally connected. Yesterday is jealous. Yesterday will never allow you to enter into tomorrow. Yesterday is like a jealous personality. You must obtain the unemotional determination to leave yesterday for the sake of tomorrow. Yesterday will want to recycle itself in your life. From one room, one day the Holy Ghost starts telling you, do you not think you should stroll around Abuja and check? If you can even find three or four plots of land and you want to rebuke it, no, where will I get the money from? All that I have is 100,000. Listen to me. God is speaking to you. For as long as you are unwilling to sustain the courage to go to the other side. For someone you may not have the money, but go and find out where the land is after this conference. Go and stay there and look at it. I cannot buy it, but my eyes have seen it. Can I tell you, one of the ways that you make God Omega is by making him Alpha. He will never become Alpha when he has not become Omega. Start with him and put pressure on his integrity to finish. I should go abroad and educate myself, but where will the help go to? Go online and find out what it takes to start. Just start with Jesus and be sure that you will arrive. You alone will fail, but you and Jesus cannot fail. Are we together? 
I came here to challenge you tonight. Honestly speaking, there are many of us who have come past this mountain long enough. I don't mean to insult you, but there are people who need to begin to contend for certain levels of grace. You have been in this pity for 10 years, 15 years, watching others come to build, watching others come to take risks by faith, and you've been giving all kinds of excuses. It's time to make up your mind. It is better to fail honorably. Listen, there is something called failing forward. When a plane is going forward and someone who is at the front seat goes back to use the restroom, is the man going behind? The plane is moving forward. He's in a plane that overall is going forward. Even though in the plane he is going backward, but the plane is too big for him to move it backwards. That's how your destiny is. Go and start the shop. What do I need? Courage. You don't need products. Open it. Open the shop. And start. Apostle, I'm in debt to the millions and the billions. How do I come out? I can tell you. If you think you're going to save your way to go out, you are joking. Listen to me. The first way to come out is to invite Jesus into the situation. You will never come out on your own. When you are in trouble, don't try to come out. Bring Jesus into the situation. There is something about him that cannot let you remain in storms. Are we together? It is time to stretch to the other side. And please do not forget, whenever you arrive, remember, there is a madman in Gadara that all that journey, your financial journey, your intellectual journey, dear worshiper, when you arrive and your songs go to the nation, remember, there is a madman whose deliverance is tied to your songs. Do not allow arrival mentality destroy you. In this kingdom, we do not stop. We move from level to level to level to level. Now, before I speak over your life to end tonight, I want you to rebuke the storm. We have identified the storm, but Jesus taught us to not forbear with storms. No. When storms finish their assignments, do not let them continue. The assignment of a storm is to verify that you were sent. The assignment of a storm is to convince you that you are moving. When you find that information, the storm does not need to remain again. There are many of us, the storms have stayed beyond their validity period. And Jesus teaches you what to do, that you are about to do now. In the next one minute, please, without distraction, in the name of Jesus, as a priest that you are, I'd like you to begin to rebuke every spirit that is back of any situation challenging your life and destiny. Believers pray. The spirit challenging my spiritual growth, challenging my prayer life, challenging my world life, challenging my passion for the house of God, challenging prophecy over my destiny. I come against you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Is someone praying? The spirit in his business just growth, in his business growth in my business. In the name of Jesus, I repeat you. By the God of heaven, thus far have you come, no further shall you go. The spirit fighting the arrival of the anointing upon my life and destiny. I come against you in the name of Jesus. I come against you by the blood of the Lamb. House on the rock, pray, decree and declare that thou mightest be justified. Every storm stopping my destiny help us from locating me and lifting me by the Spirit. Every storm challenging my business. Every storm challenging Nigeria. Every storm challenging my family. Are you declaring by the Spirit? Please! 
be sealed. Finances hear the word of the Lord. Ministry hear the word of the Lord. Business hear the word of the Lord. Family life hear the word of the Lord. Peace be sealed. I rebuke every spirit. I cast down imagination. Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. I declare by the Spirit of the living God. Please go ahead and pray. We're wrapping up. Pray. 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 At most fear, fear now, pray people please hear me let me challenge you I'd like you to use this entire period of this conference as a moment of spiritual emphasis some of you need to go home and lock your gate and start walking like the priest that you are around your house and if they ask you what are you doing tell them the storm has stayed beyond its limit the storm has stayed beyond its limit and you begin to rebuke. Lay your hands upon your documents when you go back home. In the name of Jesus, I end this season of pain. It's time to arrive, not just to move. Declare your arrival, prophesied by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have prayed, but hear me, the disciples were too weak to rebuke the storm by themselves. But they were also not too proud to tell Jesus, help us. There are certain times you may not have the level of spiritual intelligence, nor the level of engracing to challenge the storms that stand before you. You must be quick to admit it and quickly call Jesus. And can I tell you this? The way Jesus walks is to empower men. Go to them that sell and buy. There are those that sell. This is why he gave in the church apostles and prophets, evangelists and pastors and teachers for the maturing of the saints. That means everything that makes for the saints to rise to their full prophetic potential is invested in. Believe me when I tell you there are times you can pray, you can stretch, you can do everything to know to do. Doctors have taught us this. Military people have taught us this. There are times that a doctor can tell you, I am a doctor. There is DR or MD behind or in front of my name. But I admit that this situation is beyond my expertise. Allow the consultants to come. And they do not feel bad allowing the consultants to come. And you can be surprised that a very delicate and complicated surgery. You may see a man who does not have the form, but he is still consultant. I have sent send carpenters to judge those horns. Carpenters. I have seen a few professionals and consultants 
and many times they don't have any form they, they can come and you you see them you can almost doubt you don't know their consultants when they are standing you know their consultants in the surgery room and with with digital precision they would carry out a very delicate and complicated procedure and come out after a few hours and say it is done this is how it is in the body of christ it is not to worship men but let me tell you sincerely by god there are people who by the privilege of the election of grace they have been vested with certain possibilities every time you find out that you've exhausted your creativity around the storm don't die in pride humble yourself let your defeat in pride not misrepresent jesus he can still come storms if you call him hallelujah i believe that the servants of god here i'm standing in faith and agreement with them to speak right now because there are many of us you've done you've prayed you've fasted you've done what you know to do the situation does not seem to listen to you but he sent us in his name to speak over that situation and so i want you tonight to shout a loud amen as i speak and declare just one minute and we're done i just want to speak over your life prophecy is powerful it says they are taken for a prey and none see it restore in the name of jesus I, I stand joining faith with the father and the priest over this commission and the angel over this house and the servants of god here we connect our spirits and in the name that is above all names right now i decree and i declare everyone here whose journey has been impeded by a storm i speak to that storm this night not tomorrow this night come to an end now 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 every force that is stopping your advancement or that of your children maybe financially ministerially in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i speak to that spirit and i speak to that storm release god's people now and i decree and declare over your life listen to me immediately the storm was calm time was no longer a factor the bible just said they arrived how long it took after the storm i told you when jesus comes in the calculation changes for some of you god told you certain things in january and as it is now it is october and you are saying by the logic of men when can i build this business i tell you when jesus is introduced you'll be surprised let me speak to you by the spirit of grace in a matter of weeks for some of you may the prophecy that you had right from january come to pass <laughs> hear me for some of you as you go home right now your prophecy will run faster than you and wait for you at home as a testimony in the name of jesus christ there are many of you by the time you are coming here tomorrow morning i decree and declare over your life it will be tears of joy you will be coming here with. can i tell you this i would not do this except god put it in my heart i want to declare over your finances this night by the spirit i'm just responding to what god is putting in my heart you will marvel and wonder i am telling you this by the god of heaven do not be like the man in samaria who said even if god will open the windows of heaven listen there is a prophetic dimension to wealth in this kingdom we are not just business people there is a government above us in the name of jesus christ 
I stretch my hands over everyone here, especially those who have gone through all kinds of financial turmoil. I stand by the God of heaven between now and tomorrow that your faith can receive it. I declare return with strange testimonies. Return with strange testimonies. Supernatural connection to destiny help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight as you go to bed, may the heavens be opened over you. Supernatural ideas, instructions, strategies that are required for the next level of your life. Receive them by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're looking at the supernatural. You can never truly talk about the reality of encounters without understanding the realm of the spirit and then understanding the supernatural the bible and even science agrees that there is not only one plane of living the bible lets us know that there are dimensions and planes of reality for instance there is the physical realm where we can touch, we can interact with things, matter as we know. But the Bible and even science tells us that there are other realms and other dimensions and planes of living that may be beyond our scientific scope. Now, most believers either have not intentionally studied and believed the reality of these planes and these realms um, sadly not not to not to glorify satan but people who have passed through all kinds of occultic practices would tell you that whilst they were involved in some of these things they were exposed to realms and dimensions and planes of reality that were above and beyond this natural plane so the first thing we have to learn this morning is that the physical realm is not the only realm available the physical realm is not the only realm available the very design of man the very design of man attests to the fact that the physical realm is not the only realm available the bible says that when god made man he first made spirit man came out of god is that true and then the bible says God molded Adam, dark earth, and he breathed into that dark earth, and man became a living soul. So man was built with an advantage to be able to interact with both realms, that man is able to concurrently interact with the realm of the spirit and to interact with the physical realm. If you're together, please say amen. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16, Colossians 1 and verse 16. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. It says, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. So there are invisible things that were created. The fact that it is invisible does not mean it is unreal. It just means that it is beyond the realm and the grasp of the optical eyes. It says visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. That means there are many things that have been created that from a scientific standpoint we have not interacted with yet. Are we together now? This is very important. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18, Paul is still speaking. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18. Please let's read together. Ready? One to read. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Hold on. The second information the Bible tells us is that there is a possibility to look at the things that are unseen. It says, while we look 
not at the things which are seen, but the things which are unseen. Under a certain condition, you can look at the things that are unseen. Are we together? And then he tells us that anything you can see without any effort is temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. It is possible to look at things unseen. In 2 Kings chapter 6, very popular scripture, we'll just read three of the portion, 2 Kings 6 from verse 16. This was Elisha and his servants when they were surrounded by the armies and he was afraid. And the Bible says, and he, the evening Elisha, answered and said, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. 17. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Question, was he blind? So what kind of opening was he talking about? That means there is another opening that is beyond this opening you have. Are we together now? He was talking to someone who had physical sight. But he said you only have sight within the scope of one realm. When it has to do with a higher dimension, you may not be able to see. So open his eyes. And the Lord opened his eyes. So God himself was attesting to the fact that this man, based on a certain plane of reality, he was blind. Open the eyes of the young man and the Bible says, and he saw. What did he now see that he did not see before? Because the Bible does not record the man being physically blind. And yet the Bible says his eyes were opened again and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses. You mean he had never seen physical horses? What kind of horses were these ones that you cannot see with the first kind of vision? Horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Please pay attention. Now he's seen another reality. Until that time, if you ask the man, document everything you can see, he would have written three horses. And if you told him there is more, he would say, I cannot. The same way you look at your bank account, the same way you look at the reports around you, and based on your optical eyes, you can write and document certain things. And when you bring it before the Lord, he says, that is not true. There is another opening that needs to happen to you. The fear of this man was based on the limitations of his sight. The fear was not based on the strength of the enemy. The strength was based on the limitation of his sight. When that other dimension of opening happened, the subject of fear died immediately. Could it be, could it be that the reason why you may have been afraid and uncomfortable about tomorrow and your next level is because you have not received this miracle of the opening of your eyes. Are we together? So there is a realm of reality beyond the physical realm. This is true. That all that we see is not all that there is. All that we see is not all that we need. There are many tools that we need to establish our victories in Christ that are beyond the scientific realm. Now this is why the Bible says the natural man does not understand the things of the spirit. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. He will need to tap into a frequency higher than the scientific realm. Write this down, please. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God 
and the Spirit of God. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then the Bible says, verse 2, it says, Now the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God. So we see the Spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. And then verse 3, we now see the word of God. Let there be light. And the Bible says there was light. I hope you know that this light was not sunlight. No, this was not sunlight. This was the life-giving component of creation. This light that becomes the life of man, you see. Sunlight was created, I think they fall also. So this was, he was not talking of sunlight. The supernatural is an interplay between the Word of God and the Spirit of God. Why do we need to understand the supernatural? Please look up. If you do not understand the supernatural, you will not be able to transport to your realms the tools that are needed for you to walk in victory. In fact, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare. He already gives you an information. Don't look for them in this realm. You will not find them here. He stored them in a realm where thieves cannot access. He stored them in a realm where the manipulations of a government cannot access. He stored them in a realm where political manipulations cannot access. He stored them in the realm of the spirit. And he says, whenever you need them, do not search for them physically. They are not carnal. He says they are mighty through God. You will need to pull them from another dimension. Are we together? Many believers desire to walk in power. Many believers desire to make progress with their lives. But many times we limit our spiritual progress by focusing only on the physical realm. Focusing only um, on science and logic and all of these things. So when we are confronted with issues that require outsourcing intelligence beyond this realm, we become stranded. Are we together now? Man was given an advantage of duality of realms. That means I can be in this realm physically, but then I can outsource intelligence from another dimension. This is very powerful, very, very powerful. That all that you see is not all that there is. Medically speaking, when an individual is diagnosed with a situation, please look up, we try using medical tools and if that man is limited as far as the limitation of medicine is concerned we conclude that there is no solution for that man but the bible lets us know that the physical realm is not the only realm where we can draw strength there is another dimension my goodness that you can outsource spiritual power from another realm and administer it physically and the results will show physically now watch this, if my body begins to swell, for instance, the question is, you are not surprised that my body is swelling, because that is a supernatural occurrence too. I was not born that way, I was not surgically manipulated to begin to swell, but when the body goes down supernaturally, it now becomes a problem. You see the mind of men. Are we together now? Yes. If I suddenly begin to develop a growth that I was not born with, nobody begins to ask where does that growth derive its strength from? Because it's not growing at the rate of other cells in the body. That means another kind of life is empowering it. We can give it all kinds of medical explanations, but the truth is that if it was being empowered by the same energy it will grow at the same rate with other cells the fact that the growth accelerated to destroy you it already tells you there is another kind of life empowering it but if that growth should shrink or disappear now there is a problem where did it go to the question is where did it come from are we together the supernatural very very powerful
until believers come to a point where they understand and appreciate the supernatural beyond being a Pentecostal phenomenon, beyond a phenomenon just for charismatics. We may never walk in certain levels of authority, power, and victory. For many people, they think the supernatural is just an option for those who are called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. So, if you feel you are not called into ministry, you just feel, let me remain at the level of principles and logic and human wisdom. The supernatural is not for men of God. The supernatural is not for charismatics and Pentecostals. The supernatural is not for preachers. The supernatural is a system of advantage provided for man so that we can walk experientially in victory. Jesus looks at Nathaniel and says, I saw you. That means this is not the only eyes I have. While you were under the tree, I saw you. In fact, he scanned him and said, An Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. And Nathaniel said, This is surprising. You are here. And he said, Nathaniel, just because I gave you this tip of the iceberg, you are already surprised. You will even see yourself greater things than this. More than what you are seeing, you will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. When you go to bed, isn't it amazing that while your body is lying down there, that same body is somewhere in the name of a mystery that you call a dream. You are there with your body, you are interacting with intelligence, participating and you bring back information and yet your body is lying down there. There are people who, do you know, science right now has been exploring deeper and deeper into this this mysterious realm of the supernatural in fact i watched a documentary i think a few months ago where they tried to develop a machine that can record dreams yes and i think they've, they've made some advances in it so the the machine is connected to an individual whilst he's sleeping and it begins to give a pictorial representation of the dream that person is having The realm of the spirit when jesus walked upon the earth he demonstrated the reality and the supremacy of the realm of the spirit jesus for instance when the young lad brought five loaves and two fish he looked at them and he taught them a lesson that all you have in your hands is not all there is if you can tap into this realm many things can happen to what you already have listen this is very powerful because when you are aware of the fact that you are not limited just by this realm there is an advantage that you have the duality of realms are we blessed right from childhood i've been very intrigued about issues of the supernatural magic and all of these things even before i had an intentional encounter with the lord jesus christ it bothered me how people could manipulate laws and sometimes you would watch these people in shows bring out doves from their pockets is that true some of them and then now fortunately god planted me to come from africa Hello Africa. We thought traditional festivals where people would put fire through their mouth and bring it out laughing, cut themselves with knife with no injuries whatsoever. These people fraternize with spirits who introduce them to certain spiritual laws that expose them to the realm of the spirit. And on the strength of that view, they could command time supposedly and wonders on earth. The Holy Spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the supernatural. The Holy Spirit is not the only spirit who can introduce men to the realm of the supernatural in fact any spirit at all including demonic spirits can usher men into certain dimensions of the supernatural the holy spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the supernatural 
in a way that edifies them and glorifies Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the only spirit who can usher men into the realm of the supernatural in a way and a manner that edifies the people and glorifies them. Every other spirit that exposes a man to the realm of the spirit will always leave a side effect in that man. Are we together now? But the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit that can expose men to the supernatural. For instance, when Moses came from his encounter with the God of the Hebrews, the Bible says he went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go. And he threw his rod. The Bible says the rod of Moses became a serpent. And you would think Pharaoh would look and say, wow, impressive. How did you make this happen? Pharaoh was not moved at all. He called Janus and Jembes, the magicians of Egypt, and cast your rod also. And they casted their rods, it became the exact same thing. By what spirit then did their rod become a serpent? Hallelujah. That is why I must balance this very quickly. That in your desperation to know more of God, in your desperation to open up yourself to the realm of the Spirit, you must be sure that the Word of God and the Spirit of God become your principal guide. Because they are not the only guides available. Your passion and your desperation can connect you to other guides and other spirits that are not of God. They will usher you to the realm of the spirit and you will bring back error, you will bring back destruction. They will aberrate your spiritual progress. Many people have gone to fast and pray, wanting power, wanting to be open to the prophetic. And from the sincerity of their desperation, because they did not honor the word of God and the spirit, Spirit of God as the principal tools for exposing a man to the realm of the spirit in a way that edifies that individual and brings glory to God. Many of them had all kinds of interactions with pseudo Jesuses. They had all kinds of interactions with spirits of the dead. They had all kinds of interactions with the inter intergalactic realm and they brought back messages, strategies, formulas that are now destroying the body of Christ. Can I tell you, I searched, I think a few days ago, to find out how many religions in the, are in the world. Let me give you that for free. There are over 4,000 religions in the world. How many? And counting. 4,000 registered religions in the world and counting. Every one of those 4,000 religions came from an encounter. And I can tell you, if there was no one following them, they would not have the audacity to even register it. Every one of them has a proposition that is directed to the realm of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not the only guide and usher to give you spiritual experiences. You have to understand this. Because we are a people of prayer. And right now... Um, spiritual activities like prayer and fasting and so on and so forth are really being emphasized in the body of Christ. Now people are having a heightened awareness of the value of this spiritual experience. But we need to be careful because Satan also wants that kind of condition. The moment your hunger and your desperation rises to its zenith and you are not conscious of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, eventually you will arrive at the realm of the Spirit and you will be escorted by strange and familiar spirits into error that will make for doom and destruction a few years ago in Zaria I think I've shared this story somewhere I finished a meeting and then just to see a few people to counsel them then I'm seeing these three or four gentlemen and one of them had this beautiful priestly regalia and I was wondering wow what a gentleman this guy really wants to be a Nazarene I thought it was just his passion to be like Jesus only for me to find out that that gentleman believed he was Jesus. Not like Jesus, not in the image of Jesus. Jesus. They came from Kano. And the other gentleman who was with him was, I, I, I think, was it Judas now or John? One of these guys. No, 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 I'm not joking. I really mean what I'm saying. They really believed it. 
and for some reason they believe that like Jesus received that impartation from John, they left Cano and they came to me for that, that semblance of the baptism. I was watching with shock. Now I've seen all kinds of things in ministry, believe me. I've seen all kinds of things, but this one was unique and strange and interesting. That a human being can actually come to that point. Do you know when I researched, those guys started as a prayer group. They didn't start as people who were bad people. They were sincere gentlemen who felt like they wanted to press into spiritual things. Welcome to the realm of the spirit unassisted by the Holy Ghost. And you find out that another spirit will drive you into all kinds of things and will shift back doctrines of demons, will shift back all kinds of things that destroy people. People have written books out of false encounters. People have deceived. Now the body of Christ is practically confused. We do not even know. Many believers don't know whether they are saved or not again because of the many extra biblical encounters that have come. And it does not mean that the people who had these encounters were necessarily bad. They have not been taught the protocol of accessing the supernatural. There are all kinds of combinations of trado African religion together with spiritism and then you find scriptures in Psalms to back it up and that becomes a terrible combination like a bad cook and you create something that destroys people. There is a reason why I'm teaching you on the supernatural this morning. Number one, because it is God's desire that we access these realms. If we must walk in victory, we cannot shy away from the reality of this realm. But number two, to provide for us a road map by the Spirit. So that we do not delve into all kinds of error and superstition that would destroy us and destroy our lives. Let me finish my story. I honestly cannot even remember how I finished with those gentlemen. Because I think that guy was determined to remain Jesus. I, I think I remember trying to propose and advise him and to let him know that our dominion in this kingdom is not absolute dominion. It is shared dominion. The life of God that we have was not derived from us. It came from Jesus to us by connection. And yet they would not believe. I know a gentleman many years ago again who really began praying and pressing into spiritual things until he eventually became, it was a mental condition. I think it resulted to something like bipolar. That gentleman was in the hospital for a very long time. In fact, he stayed in my house. I brought him then at that time to stay in my house for a day or two, hoping that the presence of God in that house will help rehabilitate whatever was happening to him. And I woke up in the night and I saw the gentleman carrying a handkerchief, looking for my mirrors. I said, you are leaving the next day. By the morning, you are out of my house. I've made my spiritual contribution. God knows I love you. Are we together? Many people have routed the realm of the spirit in unauthorized ways. I hope you know that there are many ways to enter a house. For instance, you can tear the roof and come in. You are in the house, but you are in the house illegally. You can jump through the fence. You can squeeze through the window. But the authorized way to enter the house is through the door. Jesus and Jesus alone said, I am. That means I am the authorized access, the way, the door. You can follow through any other route. If you enter my house through my window, you are in my house, but you are not welcome. Are we together? This is not to plant fear in you. We are discussing the subject of encounters. And we have to be careful. The supernatural is a realm that is available for all. The supernatural is a realm that we should all get to. That means you should get to a point in your life where you can manifest the gifts of the Spirit. You should get to a point in your life where your eyes are open to encounter and have visionary experiences. All of these 
systems of advantage as I call them, they are important for the excelling of the believer. But if you are not guided, the devil will deceive us and manipulate our sincere desire into realms and encounters and activities that will destroy us. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So the supernatural is an interplay between the word of God and the spirit of God. Let me talk for a minute or two about the word of God. Please look up. When you are dealing with the subject of the supernatural, there is something about God you have to know and understand. That the boundary of God's commitment to the believer is his word. The word of God represents the jurisdiction of God's commitment to the believer. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions that the word allows. You have to understand this. He has limited his interaction with man to the provisions that scripture allows. That means if you cannot find the basis for that interaction from scripture, God is not committed to it. Are we together now? This is, this is a rule of thumb that you have to understand in your desire to explore the realm of the spirit that the boundary of God's commitment to man is his word. That means there is nothing God will ever do with man, do for man, do to man that will be outside the provisions that his word allows. In fact, the Bible says that he has exalted his word above his reputation. So, there is no other way an individual will be saved in this kingdom. Because according to scripture, the formula for administering salvation is that with your heart you believe unto righteousness. Is that true? And that with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if anyone ever tells you he or she was saved, you have a right to ask them, how did you get saved? Verify the formula. If it's not consistent with scripture, no matter what kind of peace he has, he's not saved. Based on scripture. Our confidence must come or be derived from the provisions that the scripture allows. The Bible says in obtaining promises, if it is God's way, there are two things that must be added to your equation. Faith and patience. It says to follow them who through faith and patience. If you ever meet a man who obtained a promise in the kingdom and you do not find the application of faith and you do not find patience, he says run away. Even if there is a promise, he's holy. So there is faith and patience. Are we together now? When you understand the administration of the word of God, then it is going to be difficult for you to delve into error. I give you an instance. If God opens my eyes right now and say, I see a dear sister here and I see a spirit standing behind her or I see a grave. Now I'm interpreting how spiritual things happen. Now I'm seeing all these kinds of things because the way the realm of the spirit works is very different from the way this realm works. The concept of time and distance in the realm of the spirit is not exactly the way it works here. In one minute, I can see something that would take me ten minutes to interpret. Are we together now? Yes. The, the, the capacity to assimilate is higher in the realm of the spirit than this realm. We can be praying right now and I can say in Jesus' name. And I'll be sharing something that I just saw and it will take over five, ten minutes. The realm of the spirit is by far superior to this realm. When the hand wrote on the wall in the days of Daniel, it was only four words from the physical realm. Mene, Mene, Tekel, Ufesen. But Mene alone meant all things you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting. <laughs> so imagine what happens when you pray in tongues. That 10 minutes of praying in tongues, you are not just saying ba 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 ba. Your mind thinks that's what you are saying. But in the realm of the spirit, you are stretching and you are creating realities and interacting with the realm of the spirit. Are we blessed now? I hope someone is learning something. 
So, back to my vision. I'm seeing this lady, for instance, and I'm seeing a grave, and I'm seeing destruction. Now, I can interpret everything based on what I saw. And I say, young lady, stand up. Then I will tell her that I just saw a grave. I just saw a spirit behind you. And I can leave that lady in that state and destroy her faith, dampen her confidence about God, and allow the devil to now take advantage of her imagination and manifest what I saw. Or I can interpret what I have seen from the lens of scripture. Now I have seen the grave. The grave has never been, except for the situation of Jesus, the grave has never really been a place of advantage. It's a representation of death and doom and destruction. Is that true? So when I see a grave and I see a spirit, I must be able to pass my vision through the lens of scripture to profit that lady. The interpretation must be constructed in a way and a manner that regardless what I saw, victory is what she must hear. Are you getting what I'm saying now? My seeing may be correct, but because I do not know that the word of God is more superior. Listen, the dominion of the word of God is not only in this physical realm. Even if you take the word of God to the realm of the spirit, every spirit will submit to it also. If God, the spirit, submits to the word of God, there is no other spirit that stands higher than the word of God. The word of God still commands authority and dominion, even in the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Yes. So if I see you dead in the realm of the spirit, I'm not just going to stand and say, I see you dead. There are many scriptures that will support my interpretation. Number one, I will discern your level of maturity. Are you mature enough for me to give you that vision without it affecting your confidence? If I discern you are immature, I will leave it and pray about it. I will just minister life to you and not have to tell you the vision. Because receiving that vision when you are not grounded, even if I pray for you, the, the level of, of the low level of transformation will still make you a victim of what I've said. Is God teaching someone something this morning? There have been many times when I'm about to take a trip and then I get text messages from people and many genuine, sincere people, some of them prophets, and they say, Apostle, you are about to take a trip. And I say, that's exactly true. Say, be careful. Please don't go. I'm seeing a ghastly motor accident. And they are not lying. That was what Satan planned that morning when I woke up. But I have to get there because... I'm aware that Satan does not have any special occasion to kill me. The Bible already gives me an information that any day and any time he finds a chance. He is an enemy. There is no rest as far as that agenda is concerned. So that news of, of tragedy based on my transformation is not news. I have always known he does not like me. There's nothing new about it. Now listen, I do not dishonor the vision that that man saw. But then my confidence is based on the fact that I have the principles of scripture that can veto that spiritual activity and I go on my journey and return back safely. Just on hearing that vision, at least three scriptures come as weapons. One, I shall not die, but live and declare. You don't just make bold face for nothing. There has to be a scriptural basis. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Go and ask my parents. Go and ask every spiritual leader in this nation whether I have dishonored them. So what becomes the basis? Where is the hedge broken that the serpent will strike? And then number three, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life. That becomes the basis of my confidence. If all I say is, God forbid, I won't die. You would die like you, are, you cannot imagine. It has to be the scripture. That the scripture has authority even in the realm of the spirit. I don't need to know what spirit was assigned. I just need to know that every spirit must submit to scripture. I pray you understand what I'm teaching this morning.
let me teach you within the few minutes we have left how to correctly access the supernatural we we'll have some time this evening to pray for the sick and to minister so do well to invite as many people who are trusting the lord who we'll have some time to minister i think you should clap with your pastor too <laughs> hallelujah yes it will be it will be a time of activations there are many of us who the lord sends you to this conference to come and to receive not just to be enlightened but to encounter graces graces that will lift you and open up new doors and new dimensions for you if you are with me say amen. amen there are many of you that tonight age long captivities that have refused to bow to the name and the lordship of the christ by the administration of his power through his word in the name of jesus will ward off these arsenals of darkness against your life there are four keys that can help you manifest the supernatural by manifesting the supernatural i don't just mean visionary experiences but walking practically in the supernatural you want your life to command signs and wonders you want your life to be a manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom beyond the physical realm here are the keys number one the first thing you need is knowledge you need knowledge of the principles of scripture you need to know the word of god knowledge of the principles of scripture that means if you truly do not know the word if you do not contend for enlightenment through the word you may never be able to manifest the supernatural in a way that profits you glorifies jesus and becomes a blessing to all who are connected to you the word of god the formula remains the same in the beginning god john 1 verse 1 says in the beginning was the word in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with god verse 3 says all things how many things does that include your finances your lifting your tomorrow your exaltation your restoration all things were made by him and without him that means outside of the influence of the word of god was not anything made that was made You must pay attention to scriptures i commend you to god he says and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified this is the bible colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 it says that the word of christ should dwell in you richly in all wisdom in all wisdom in all wisdom in all wisdom not some wisdom let the word of christ dwell in you richly 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 you must allow the word of god to find expression within your spirit you must become an addict of the word of god if you truly want to walk in the supernatural before you start engaging in spiritual exercises make sure you have the fortification of the word fasting for days praying for days without a foundation of the word will only expose you to the realm of the spirit but then it will expose you to familiar spirits you must have that foundation of the word we are born of the word we live by the word we reign by the word say amen, amen. you must have knowledge I submit to you that there is a lot of spiritual ignorance in the body of Christ. Spiritual ignorance. I respectfully admit, and now I'm teaching apostolically, not just to house on the rock, but generally within the body of Christ, the truth is that there is a lot of Bible study. There is a lot of scripture recitation, but there is very little access to superior knowledge spiritual knowledge we reign in this kingdom on the strength of the high level illumination that we have 
you must contend for light. John 1 5. And the light shineth in darkness. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. You must become a student of scripture. Not for the purpose of preaching. Not for the purpose of having something to say. But for your personal spiritual growth. You are mature to the degree to which the word of Christ abides in you. John 15, the first eight, eight verses. When you read from verse 1 down to verse 8. It talks of the abiding power of the word. If you are abide in me and my word abides in you that you will ask whatever you will and it will be given to you you have to abide i believe the word of god i study the word of god i love the word of god it is my meditation all day long it has constructed my understanding are we together? One advantage of the word of God is that it constructs your viewpoint. You are able to interpret life from the lens of scripture. Make the word of God a priority in your life. And you have set yourself on a course for supernatural living. I guarantee you on this. The Bible contains the wisest perspective on all matters. The Bible, scripture contains the wisest perspective on all matters now in truth i will tell you you will find a lot of theological debates as to um the fact that there may be other books of the bible and it's not only 66 books i agree i agree based on theology but the bible lets us know that this that has been canonized is sufficient to communicate the whole counsel of God. As far as the excelling of the believer is concerned, there is nothing that you will ever encounter in your life that does not have a solution based on scripture. So the information here is sufficient enough. It says many miracles Jesus did which are not recorded in this book. So it tells you there are others that are not recorded. It said, but this has been recorded that you will believe. And that in believing you will find life. The truths here are sufficient to administer life and victory as far as the cost of your lifetime is concerned. Are we blessed? Knowledge. The knowledge of scripture. And let me tell you this. The seed for the harvest of knowledge is to be able to set yourself, to give yourself to study and to give yourself to learning. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Preachers, we must study. Believers, we must study. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. I am in a hurry would destroy our lives. They are life to those who find them. They are more than information to those who find them. They are life. The Bible is not a lecture manual. It contains the character of God. It is a revelation of God's ways. It's modus operandi. When you understand scripture, you are enlightened. Dominion, the word exousia that is translated authority, it means delegated power that is based on light. The power to stand and represent another based on that information that that one has. That means if I send someone to stand for me, I would not just say delegate for me until I tell him what I know. Are we together now? That's sharing together. So you come to a point of illumination. Number two, very quickly. The second key that activates the supernatural. Are we ready? Yes. The second key is faith. You must have faith in God. You must have the faith of God. Mark 11. We'll start reading from verse 22. Mark 11. This is Jesus about to teach us his classic on faith. Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. For many of you who are familiar with the writings of men like Papa Hagen, they would interpret this as have the faith of God. Next verse. He says, this is how the character of faith in God or the faith of God works. Whatsoever thou shalt say, so in faith there is a saying, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, 
So the heart is part of the equation for faith. And shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. The Bible says he shall have whatsoever he saith. The general rule is in verse 24. Verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray. So we see that prayer is part of the faith equation. Believe that thou receivest them, and thou shalt have them. You cannot manifest the supernatural if there is no faith. What is faith? Your conviction. Faith is beyond believing. The word believing comes from the Greek word pistis. It means conviction. But it does not stay with conviction. You can believe and yet you have not manifested faith. Faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of his word. There has to be action for it to be called faith. And the action will be in accordance to the conditions he's created. You don't just act at random. Every promise in scripture has a a predefined condition attached to it if you want to prosper in the kingdom you want supernatural prosperity and the blessings of God it is your responsibility to find out the principles that connect to that possibility there is he that scattereth the Bible says and yet increase it there is he that withholdeth more than is meat and tends to poverty the diligent hand shall be made fat so these are all the tools that make for prosperity in the kingdom there is a place for diligence there is a place for favor there is a place for the anointing there is a place for sowing and all of these things put together when you know them and you act upon them you put pressure on God's integrity and then you begin to see a manifestation of the same most believers believe but they do not have faith if I ask you for instance to come up here and you keep speaking and say I am coming in the name of Jesus I am coming in fact I'm running I'm in a hurry I'm coming you heard me and you are communicating with me but you have not come so many people just continue to confess and there is a place for that it's from the word homologio it means repeat as you heard to confess means to to echo it again as stated by the word but it does not mean that you just confess over everything and sit down. There are things that you need to stand up and move. You need to act. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and observe all that I command you this day. It says that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. You must be careful to do, not just to learn. Faith is not just saying what God has said. Faith is doing what God has said. The power is in the doing. Are we together now? When he commanded the ten lepers, go and show yourself to the priest, he said. The Bible says, as they went. Not as they wished. Not as they were deciding. It was as they went. Turning water to wine, John 2. He says, fetch and go and serve. The Bible says, as they were going, that risk was what turned the water to wine. Can I tell you the truth? If you will ever raise a dead body, you must have the faith to stand before one. If you cannot have the courage to stand before a dead body, forget about resurrection. And I can tell you firsthand in my life, I've stood in front of a few dead bodies. Usually when people die, people are quick to call me and you know, try to pray for their resurrection first before eventually they give up. So I get this quite honestly, maybe at least once every week. Someone has died, apostle, we believe something can happen. And I agree, I've used it to exercise my faith. Uh, I don't know if I've shared it here. The first time, it was the anatomy lab of ABU Zaria. You know, they have a mortuary there. Someone died and they took me there and closed the door. Yes, sir. I saw dead bodies and I was wondering, now, which one am I going to pray for? Faith. That's right. Faith. I laid my hands on that dead body and it was as if I was touching a stone. I'd been embalmed. 
the name of Jesus come back to life in the name of Jesus come back to life I said everything quoted everything declared remember try to remember how Jesus raised the, the son of the, the widow had named Lazarus all these people nothing worked do you know to be honest with you at the point I stood there and I told them I said you people should open the door for me the next time would be the mortuary of the teaching hospital now they locked me there because usually they don't allow that so they smuggled me in and closed the door so many dead bodies some lying on that and I was watching you ah I was afraid until fear. Do you know? Let me tell you. One of the ways that God takes away fear. Look up, please. Let me teach you something. One of the ways that God takes away fear is to bring you face to face with what you are afraid of. You will stay with it so long you will stop being afraid of it. I prayed and prayed and nothing happened. And I just used the opportunity to think about my life. At least let me not waste that moment before they open the door. Everyone here was once alive. Oh God, teach me to number my days. That I may apply my heart unto wisdom. How did I get here? I'm teaching about faith. Hallelujah. You must manifest faith. Now for a long time, I have a few more minutes. For a long time there has been a debate, especially between the charismatics and, you know, certain believers that we may call, respectfully speaking, maybe word of faith. It's been that there are people who choose, listen carefully, there are people who choose faith and there are people who choose the Holy Ghost. Are we together? The Pentecostals and the charismatics, generally. So, the word of faith people, for instance, now this is not, we're all word of faith, you understand what I'm saying? There are people who just believe that all it takes is just your faith. Leave the Holy Ghost, once you have faith, let he can go places. And there are those who believe, forget about faith, faith is nonsense. Once you have the Holy Ghost, just move. The Bible has never dichotomized faith and the Holy Ghost. Let me explain to you. The ministry of faith and the Holy Ghost. Please look up. I'm holding here a bottle of water. The bottle is faith. The Holy Ghost is akin to the water. Are we together now? The power of the Holy Ghost has to flow through that funnel called your faith. So the assignment, listen to me, faith has no power in itself. Faith is just a system of connection. You must believe faith but not idolize it. There is, there is no dogma out of faith. Faith is simply a system of connection. Faith connects you, your situation, to the power of God. But the agency that really brings the result is not faith. It is the power of God. It is His divine power that gives us all things. But when we say it happened through your faith, you are right because it was your faith that connected you. Are we together now? Yes. Can I, can I use one example with money? Will you be sad if I bring out money? Praise God. Because there are people who are not in the mood for this kind of joke. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, watch this. This is the hundred dollar bill. Are we together? If I want a bottle of water, watch this. And this is a hundred dollars. This hundred dollar bill connects me to the possibility of taking this water. Is that true? So, if you ask me, how are you going to get this water? I will lift this and tell you this is the assurance I have that I can get the water. But what do I really need? Which of them do I need? Which one brings the satisfaction? Which one brings the nourishment? It is not the money. But without this, I cannot access this. That is the union between the faith and the power of God. Faith and the power of God. Don't dichotomize it. No. It takes faith to access the power of God. It takes the power of God to provide solutions. Faith does not provide solutions. Faith is like currency. Currency can feed you. You are right. But currency is not food. Are you getting this example now? Yes. 
So, if I ask you, how do you think you'll be able to buy or pay for that house? You lift this. If I ask you, how did you purchase the house? You say, by God's grace, I had a hundred thousand or fifty million or whatever to buy the house. But it is, you are not going to live in the money, you will live in the house. This is how faith works. The assignment of faith comes to an end the moment the power of God is released. Are we together now? You have to learn this. This is what I want. The miracles, the breakthroughs, the increase, whatever it is. But this is what will bring it. Faith. So, I do not ignore this and start glorifying this while I'm dying of thirst. This comes so that I can use it to purchase this possibility. So when God wants me to have more of this, He gives me more of this. Are you seeing now? There is, there, is no, there is no fighting. When God wants me to always have this, He will make sure I always have this. But this is not really what satisfies me. This connects me to what provides solution for me. If you understand this, there will be no, there will be no confusion as to the ministry of faith and the ministry of the power of God. So when I say you need faith, it is true. Like you need currency. You don't go around the market or a mall strolling around and just desiring everything you want without the requisite level of finances to purchase that reality. Is that true? So when you build your faith, what are you doing? You are elongating and extending and strengthening your capacity to draw the power of God. It is true. So when he says, where is your faith? In other words, my power is available, but that container, that funnel to receive it. Remember that oil plus a small vessel does not equal profit. Profit is equal to oil plus a very large vessel, large vessels. The problem was not lack of oil. It was that the capacity to carry the kind of oil that would bring that woman out of death was not there. So if I am building my faith, it's like creating more vessels. I'm not going to invent another oil. The oil can grow to match the size of that, that container. That's how faith works. So when you commit to building your faith, listen carefully, you are opening up yourself to more of the power of God, more of the activity of the supernatural. Are we together? I've even gone ahead of myself. Number three and the last key is the anointing. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. In fact, let me give you one more before that. The power of words. Just back up a bit. The power of words. I omitted one point here. The power of words. You cannot truly access the supernatural in silence. The realm of the spirit is voice activated. You manifest the realm of the spirit through words. Words in prayer, words in word-based declarations. The realm of the spirit is activated through words. Everybody say words. The Bible says where the word of a king is, there is power. You want to walk in the supernatural? Words. That you now declare over people, for instance, be healed in the name of Jesus. And at the point where you are speaking, the power of God to bring that healing is now released. Are we together now? Every time Jesus needed to perform a miracle, almost every time, there was a place in the equation of that miracle where words came forth. Lazarus, he said, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Words. That means if you want to walk in the realm of the spirit, there is no place for silence. You must learn to declare. Not declare your problems, not declare your pain, declare scripture and command the realm of the spirit by the authority given to you in and through Christ to respond to you accordingly. And I will not be 
Thailand, I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will. Please look up. The Bible lets us know that we live off two things. One, bread. Two, words. Jesus himself was teaching. And he says the only way man lives is by bread and words. Bread and words. If you have bread alone, you will not live effectively. If you have words alone, you will not live effectively. You want to live effectively in this kingdom, you need bread for the physical realm, words for the spirit realm. Bread and words. So as I eat, I speak. No wonder you is the same mouth that you need to access both of them. Both bread and words require the same channel to remind you that you need both to survive. Bread and words. So when I begin to declare over my life, the Lord is my light and my salvation. I begin to declare over my destiny. In the name of Jesus, my going out is blessed and my coming in is blessed. I decree and declare, the Gentiles come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising. Nothing dies in my hands. I'm speaking with this understanding that words are powerful. They can create, they can adjust, they can manipulate things to be consistent with the will of the Father. Jesus is never called the prayer of God. Jesus is never called the fasting of God, but he is called the word of God. Are we together? When you pray, what makes prayer powerful is that it is a manifestation of words. Whether praying in the spirit or making prophetic decrees, petitions in the spirit. Listen to me. If you ignore the prayer ministry, you have ignored the opportunity to take advantage of words and create possibilities with them. Prayer is powerful. You want to access the realm of the spirit, you must obtain grace from God to pray. And please hear me in this conference, if there is anything attacking your prayer life, you must obtain grace this morning to fight it with a bulldog determination. Do not forbear with spiritual laxity. It will destroy you and give Satan access to rob you of an opportunity to live a supernatural life. Say amen, please. I believe in prayer. I truly believe in the ministry of prayer. But I believe in prayer with understanding. Not shadow boxing. I believe in prayer. The Bible calls certain kinds of prayers vain babblings. Jesus was giving warnings about prayer. And he says when you pray there is a protocol that you must follow. But hear me. He spake a parable to the end that men ought to pray. If you are an angel that's alright. If you are a spirit alone, that's all right. But if you are a man, there is no record of God praying. He does not need to pray. But when God became a man, he prayed. And now that he's seated as a man, he's still praying. Even in heaven, Jesus is still praying. So all men must pray. You don't pray because you are on earth. You pray because you are a man. Because even in heaven, whoever is a man in heaven there must pray. Jesus the man, seated at the right hand of the Father, still makes intercession for the saints. Are we together? You must obtain grace to pray. Pray in the morning. Pray in the afternoon. Pray in the night. Pray when things are alright. Pray when things are not alright. Pray when you have breakthroughs. Pray when there are challenges. James 5.13 is any of you afflicted let him pray the biblical recommendation for afflictions of all sorts is to pray are we together let him pray pray in the spirit pray with understanding 
Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other way. If we ignore the ministry of prayer, prayer in the spirit, prayer engaging scripture in strategic warfare prayers, there are gates and there are thrones, there are dominions mandated by darkness to stand and rob you from accessing your glorious destiny. Nothing will change by default. Time does not change things. Time only reveals. It does not change. You must engage the realm of the spirit in prayer. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Someone in one minute can you pray? Pray and declare in the spirit and in understanding. I decree and declare that I begin to walk in the supernatural. You are declaring by the spirit of God. Everything around my life is supernatural. Supernatural finances. Supernatural ministry. Supernatural grace. Supernatural family. Supernatural advancement. In the name of Jesus. I grow past the natural course of things. Supernatural living. Hallelujah. Let me give us the last key. A quick recap. Number one, the first key to accessing the supernatural and manifesting the same is knowledge of scripture, the word of God. Number two, faith. Faith in God. Number three, the power of words. Words that come in prayer. Listen carefully. God bless you. You can help me drop it in the offering envelope. Thank you. Words that come in prayer and word-based prophetic declarations. Lamentation is not prayer. Lamentation is just a human way to express pain. Ah, this is how my life is. You are not praying. No. Can I tell you this? God is touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but He only moves in response to His word. God does not move in response to our feelings. God is touched with our feelings, but because He also submits to His word, He will only respond at the instance of His word. The last is the anointing. Mm. The anointing was given to us by God to help us manifest the supernatural. The power of God, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. The Bible says, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory and virtue. Your breakthrough will be according as His divine power gives. Your lifting is according as His divine power gives. Listen to me. The divine power of God at work in a human vessel is what transforms you to a sign and a wonder. You are able to walk and manifest the supernatural when the anointing of the Holy Spirit rests upon your life. And believe me, I know what I am saying. Most people have downplayed the power of God because we have limited the operation of the power of God to just falling down and getting up. So, the moment you are able to have someone fall down and stand up, many times we convince ourselves that that is the limit to the operation of the power of God. The assignment of the power of God is to insist that everything in your life becomes consistent with the word of God. The assignment, listen to me, the power of God has the assignment to make the word of God look true in your life. That means if there is nothing to confirm, the anointing has no ministry. Please understand this. The power of God has no ministry until the word of God goes forth. The assignment of the power of God is to stop the word of God from looking like a lie in your life. So when God says, I am lifting you. He sends his power. The assignment of that power is to make sure by any means you do not remain at that position. Are we together now? Yes. So, if the president of a nation gives a decree and says there has to be sanitation or there is a lockdown for a day, the president does not go around 
ensuring that houses are locked and shops are locked, there is an agency mandated for that. But they go at the word of the president. The basis of their operation, the basis of their arrest, the basis for their release is the word of the president. So if he has not spoken, they cannot just come and hold you. So when you decree as the king that you are, in the name of Jesus, then the power of God is released to begin to produce the miracles and the signs and the wonders. If he says, I am blessed, the assignment of the word of God or the power of God is to insist that anything that looks like a cost, anything that defies the operation of the blessing, that it be judged by that power. Are we together now? This is very, this is a, a powerful revelation. If God says, I am the head and not the tail, then there is a dimension of his power that is released over that statement. The power continues to trail and guide me. If anything appears in my life that can make me the tail, that becomes the assignment of the power of God. It stays there to deal with that situation until it brings me back as the head. If God declares upon your life that favor follows you, that anointing for favor will rest upon you like a mantle. And anybody who can bless you, that anointing will force them to not ignore you. The anointing has the assignment of insisting that they pay attention to you and attend to you until you match the level of the speaking of that favor. The four lepers, when a prophetic word came by this time tomorrow over Samaria, there were four lepers who were walking, but the power of God came to amplify their steps. And the enemies heard and they began to think that they had hired a few people to come and fight them and they ran away and left plenty there. That's the assignment of the power of God. And I know that someone who came for this conference, especially this morning, you are at a point in your life where there are many words over you, but it looks like there is no performance. You need to engage the power that makes that word come to pass. Otherwise, you will keep piling prophecies that will make God look like a liar. God is not a man that you should lie. Why is he not a man that you should lie? Listen to me. You, you may have heard it in my teachings. God became a man, but he is not a man. If God is a man, then he must worship who created him. He became a man. But he is not a man. Men lie. They don't lie because they are evil. They lie because they are men. But God is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. That means before God speaks, he will vet whether he has the power to back up what he is saying. Everything that he said here, he vetted himself and found out that he has sufficient power to bring it to pass. So when God says, Joshua Selman, you will be lifted above the nations of the earth and these blessings will come upon you and overtake you. I believe him because the word is true, but I also believe him because there is a force behind that word that will insist that I do not remain small. On the strength of this you can rise. This is why we have the audacity to come for a meeting like this and dare to say that your life will not be the same. This is why we can come for a meeting like this and dare to say that that situation that has scared you for a long time, that it can go. Imagine if it were just mere words. It would be dangerous to just give people mere words and information. Behind the things that we say, there is a throne, there is grace, and there is power that backs it. Blessed is she that believes, he says, for unto her there shall be a performance. Listen to me. If I take this water, I don't need to run to the lab and verify whether it is working correctly, whether it went to the right places. I trust the design and the wisdom and the intelligence of God. There is power that works there. Once it passes through my throat, I go and find rest. I do other things as proof that I know that God is intelligent enough. He's put this system. Imagine how long men live and yet they've never had to tear themselves open to verify whether digestion is happening correctly or not. 
And can I tell you this? He took responsibility for your trusting him. That's why he gave medicine and doctors. So that in case there is any malfunction, you have a right to outsource another drug and you can take it. And by taking it, it corrects everything. And if it defies that drug, should he not be responsible enough to say, now that this is over, I created this to function this way. If drugs are limited, then I can outsource from another realm beyond trees beyond water beyond injection i can bring another reality to keep you in place we are going to pray very briefly this morning i want you as you prepare to stand to believe that things will definitely begin to change in your life because of the reality and the presence of the supernatural. The supernatural is an advantage that God gave the believer. That we can command signs, we can command wonders, we can make tremendous levels of advancement in our lives. If we move beyond the realm of science, beyond the realm of intellect. Can I tell you, there is a disclaimer though. If you intend to walk in the supernatural, then you must be ready to believe the things that science may not allow. You may be ready to believe certain things that do not make sense. Are we together now? It is not scientifically correct to dance and get breakthrough. Why will you dance your way to victory? It doesn't make sense scientifically. You work hard to get breakthrough. But there is a mystery. When you access the supernatural, you must be childlike enough to subscribe to the formula that makes you to receive supernatural results. Please rise up on your feet. From a human standpoint, you don't give to increase. No. You keep to increase. But in this kingdom, it says you give and then you increase. Medically speaking, you don't lay hands on a man and the man gets healed. You submit the man to a therapy, you administer drugs, but the Bible says they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In one minute I'd like you to pray and ask the Lord to grant you grace that you desire to begin to walk and live in the supernatural. Please lift your voice and pray. You are a man of God here, pray. End time ministry requires the supernatural. You will never truly, truly, truly be able to command the kind of kingdom influence that you desire. Obtaining natural results. You are a businessman. It cannot be at the frequency of the natural. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray. Please pray. Just a few minutes this morning and we are done. Pray for the grace to build your faith. The grace to build your faith. The grace to build your faith. Your capacity to believe God. Your capacity to walk in keeping with spiritual principles. Declare over yourself the grace to pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. Grace to pray. No spiritual laxity. The fire and the grace to pray. Hallelujah. Please look up. The final prayer that I want you to pray is for the kind and the level of power that must come upon your life to turn you to another man. He says, I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him. It takes the power of the Holy Spirit to transform you from a natural individual 
to a supernatural individual the results that you need to command have to be spiritual to bring glory to the name of the lord you are going to pray power from heaven may fresh fire and fresh power come upon your life come upon your business go ahead and pray please pray let it be from the depth of your heart fresh power from heaven The Bible says, as he came out of the water, which represents the word, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Ghost descended upon him in the similitude of a dove. He was then driven to the wilderness, fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and the Bible says, and he returned in the power of the Spirit. Spiritual empowerment is a necessity if we must walk in the supernatural. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy ways! Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Ministry with power, business with power, career with power, family life with power. Excelling in destiny with power. Someone is praying, no more ordinary living, no more ordinary business, supernatural by the Spirit. The power of God has come to my life to give me an advantage. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen, before I step down, I want to encourage you as much as possible. Please, I want you tonight to invite everyone you love and everyone you know for the service tonight. Because I believe with all my heart that one of the things that the Lord is going to be doing is that He will be granting us encounter with power, genuine power, that produces results results that can be proven listen if your life does not bear fruit and it does not command results you will be frustrated for a while you may ignore it as though it does not matter but eventually the frustration will eat you up and it will not give you room to be fulfilled it says listen to me herein is our father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples hallelujah Praise the name of the Lord. Let me just speak over your life this morning and then we wrap up. Thank you for your patience. And I pray that this truth you have heard will not just be a preacher's information, but that it comes to your heart and that it dwells in your heart and that it will produce results in your life. I stretch my hands right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's, there's no time for ministration now, but I, I just saw the hand of God just rest on a lady right now. Just saw like the power of God just resting on one lady right now. Please help her. My dear, I don't know if you're a member of this church or not, but the Lord said I should tell you that that is an, an end. He's brought an end to captivity over your life and your family just help her she doesn't have to come out in the name of jesus christ an end to captivity by the spirit of the living god father i thank you for the privilege of ministering your word to your people the kind of power and anointing that you need for the days that are ahead i decree and declare right now May that increasing from heaven rest upon you. For someone, you are a man of God. You came for this conference with hunger. Crying from the depth of your heart for a new anointing. Crying from the depth of your heart for a new release. In the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. For someone, you came here because the challenges that stand before you, the level of grace you have accessed may not be able to give you triumph above it. In the name of Jesus, let there be an upgrade of power. 
from today ordinary living comes to an end in your life ordinary business comes to an end in your life ordinary ministry comes to an end in your life you begin to walk in the supernatural you begin to manifest the supernatural and in the name of Jesus I declare that the spirit of error the spirit of deviation and apostasy deviation from the patterns of God remains far from you you will access the realm of the spirit correctly and you will manifest the same in a way that edifies you and glorifies Jesus in the name of Jesus Christ for many of you between now and this evening you return with strange testimonies in the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus Christ amen and amen God bless you and we lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord for an encounter tonight Just wave your hands lift it to Jesus ask him for a visitation ask him for an encounter that as his word comes as his power flows let it come your direction let it change your life let it give you a new beginning someone pray following online make sure you're praying father tonight give me a visitation here at house on the rock the refuge go ahead and pray let it be from the depth of your heart do not be distracted please pray Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I believe by the authority of Scripture and the witness of the Spirit that this is one night that we may not forget in a hurry in the name of Jesus Christ because the Bible says whatsoever name Adam called it that was the name Terra. we have called it a conference that would bring encounters and encounters we will experience in Jesus name it is important for us to understand why we are here and understanding will be seated shortly but just just listen as you stand understanding is very important in this kingdom your testimony your joy is based on understanding please give us nehemiah 8 i believe is verse 12. nehemiah 8 and verse 12 will be seated just to look at that scripture, Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Maybe I'll ask you to say, please say, just say, just say, thank you. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Can we have it projected? Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 12. Please read with me. One, two, read. And the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great men why because they understood the words that were declared unto them their celebration was based on the confidence they had from understanding they went to eat they went to drink they sent portions they went to make merry because they understood the words that were declared unto them hallelujah tonight very briefly I'm teaching on encounter with power encounter with power I'll teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray I, I really sense that there especially are people who have struggled with all kinds of bodily limitations sicknesses and infirmities 
the healer already prophesied that it is in this room and we decree and declare in the name of Jesus that not one person will leave this place disappointed in the name of Jesus Christ 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20 we have been called into a life of power we have been called into a life of power Christianity is a faith walk of power it is important that you understand the power dimension of the Christian faith 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20 please 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 20 the Bible says for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power the manifestation of the kingdom has a power component to it you have to understand that the faith walk is a walk of power most believers know that there is such a phenomenon as the power of God but not many people have paid particular interest to understand the importance and the necessity of power in the life of a believer it took power for the word to become flesh and to be made manifest in the womb of a woman it took power for him to walk in a territory that did not pay attention to the counsel of God it took power for him to minister all through his manifestations on earth the miracles the signs and the wonders everything happened on account of the power of the Holy Ghost the Bible says at age 30 Jesus now having been baptized by John the Bible says the heavens were opened and the Holy Ghost came upon him in the similitude of a dove and then he departed to the wilderness after 40 days and 40 nights of prayer with fasting tempted of the devil the Bible says he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit not just full of the Spirit he returned in the power of the Holy Spirit all of the miracles that happen in the Bible especially in the life of Jesus were products of the manifestations of his power from the multiplication of bread and fish the raising of the dead the healing of the sick casting out demons and all kinds of miraculous manifestations like we considered yesterday calming the storm they said what manner of man is this that even the wind and the waves obey him hallelujah praise the lord one time the centurion's daughter died she was sick unto death and the centurion beckoned on jesus or jesus said let us go to your house and the centurion said no i understand a bit about power and authority for i am also a man under authority and on the strength of the authority i can tell one go and he will go i can tell another come and he will come so you too jesus i know that you are not just a benevolent savior you are under authority there is power that you can exert speak the word only and jesus said who taught you i have not found this faith no not in israel it took power for that dead body of jesus christ to come back to life on the third day the bible lets us know that there was a contention in psalm 24 when jesus was about to get back to the earth realm there was a cry lift up your heads O ye gates and be ye lifted ancient doors that the king of glory may come in and the gates spoke they said who is this king of glory because the law is that when you exit this realm someone from this realm has to call you back you can't return on your own so who is calling this one back now nobody on earth was calling him back yet he wanted to return and here was the reply he said he is the king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle what battle the defeat of satan and to collect the keys that adam gave man and triumphantly he rose again and when he rose again he said all hail 
all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me go with that consciousness that this assignment is an assignment that will require power and I have supplied that power in Acts chapter 2 and verse 1 the Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come until that time he had spent time teaching them he sent them two by two seven by seven they went and they, they had all kinds of marvelous testimonies and they said even the demons fled at the word at their presence and Jesus said do not rejoice over this rejoice that your names are written in heaven he told them tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power and on that glorious morning the Bible says they were together in one accord. The faith life, what you call Christianity, was about to be birthed. It did not just come by a sermon. It was power that introduced the life that you call today the faith life. The Bible says suddenly there was a sound of a mighty rushing wind. It came and it filled that room. And they saw what looked like cloven tongues. And it sat on every one of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They prayed in other tongues. And that was the beginning of a life of exploits. One time Peter was passing at the hour of prayer. And he saw a man who had been lame there. And the man beckoned on them expecting to receive something. And he said, silver and gold I do not have. But there is what I have. I know what I have. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the Bible says the man just stood there watching and Peter held his hand and lifted him and he leaping stood. It takes power to excel in life. It takes power to ward off the forces of darkness that continue to contend against your life and my life and the purposes of God. The faith life is a life of power. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 5. Paul is speaking now. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Why? Verse 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 61, the Messianic prophecy, we read the first seven verses. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. For, or because the Lord had anointed me. The word anoint means to legitimize my operation. He has anointed me to preach. It takes the anointing, the power of God, to preach good tidings to the meek. It takes more than a good sermon to preach good tidings to the poor or the meek. It takes the power of God. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives. The opening of prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. It says to proclaim the year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Please say Amen. amen. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. It says that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Verse 4 says, and they shall build the old ways. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. Verse 5, strangers shall stand and feed your flock. And the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. Verse 6 says, But ye shall be named the priests of God. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. The last verse, For your shame, my goodness, this is a word for someone tonight, that for your shame, by the anointing this night, you shall receive double. And for confusion, 
It says they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Please sit down. Physics defines energy as power that is expended within time that that it is possible please look up that it is possible to to expand power is defined as energy that is with respect to time there is an ability that is released in time we call it power it is truly the definition of power there is an ability of the spirit please look up everybody there is an ability of the spirit that can function in time to turn lives around to squeeze situations that are not consistent with the word of god until they exit your destiny and to introduce to your life the things that reflect what the word of god says should be in your life it takes the power of the holy ghost if i want to lift this this beautiful um pulpit here if i want to lift it i may attempt to lift it but there is a requisite level of energy a requisite level of power to be able to lift this the the power that is applied must be the greater than the power keeping this down is that true i can apply this effort this F, this energy but if it is not strong enough to overcome what is keeping it down it will remain down there are we together now psalm 66 verse 3 says say unto god how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through your power through the greatness of it through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. I made up my mind and I cried to God when he was calling and sending me to ministry. I said, Lord, do not just send me with a message. It will take more than a message to deliver the captives. It will take more than just a sermon to, to set age-long captivities and bring every negative thing to the obedience of Christ. In addition to the teachings, in addition to the messages, may I have the privilege of being a host of your power. Are we together? Encounter with power. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ who for 30 years, even though he was the word, but without the power of heaven resting upon that word, he seemed powerless for 30 years. He could not do any miracle. There was no record of any sign and any wonder for 30 years until the Holy Ghost came. And when the Holy Ghost came, with that Holy Ghost came power. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive ye shall receive anything the bible says to receive can be rejected many have rejected power ye shall receive power after that the holy ghost is come upon you and that power will make you witnesses you may have heard me teach that a witness is a validator of a claim you do not need a witness until there is contention when you go to the law court you only need a witness if someone tries to negate the point you are presenting. Then the judge will ask you to bring your witness. The assignment of the witness is to confirm the truthfulness of what you are saying. And usually that witness will be asked to present a token of truthfulness called an evidence. We were not there when Jesus died physically. We were not there when he walked upon the earth. We were not there when he defeated Satan. We were not there when he ascended to heaven. And yet he says we must be his witnesses. What then becomes the evidence? How do we tell the world that though we were not there, we are not lying? It takes the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the evidence given to the believer. 
please pay attention. You cannot be an effective witness without power. The gates will ask you. Pharaoh will ask you who sent you. Don't stand before Pharaoh and advocate the exodus of God's people. Pharaoh will ask you who sent you. Are we together? If it is true that Jesus is alive, if it is true that he died, he defeated hell, he defeated sin, he defeated Satan, he defeated the grave, and today he reigns in victory, like we sing and so boldly propose, there must be an evidence, a token of truthfulness. If it is true that he is alive over sickness, if it is true that he is alive over, over principalities and powers, let me tell you this. Our Christianity will only remain opinion if we do not back it up with the requisite level of power. The, the world that we live in today is a very proud world. The Bible says the Greek stick for its time. When you say God lives, they will tell you, I have heard, I want to see. When you say God blesses, they will tell you, I have heard, but I want to see. Acts chapter 8, please. Let me show you how the gospel was supposed to be communicated. Acts chapter 8, we'll start from verse 5. The Bible says, And Philip went down to the city of Samaria, please look up, and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed to those things which Philip spake. Please read the remaining part with me. Hearing. It was never designed to stop at the realm of hearing alone. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Next verse. It says, for unclean spirits. This is what they saw. Crying with a loud voice came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies that were lame were healed. As a result, and there was great joy in house on the rock, the refuge. The manifestation of the kingdom of God in signs and wonders and miracles. Now, you may have heard me say this, that the reason why we seek and love and passionately pursue the things of God is not because of the things that we get. We love Him beyond things. Are we in agreement? We love Him beyond miracles, beyond signs, beyond wonders. However, in His benevolence, in fact, according to the teachings of Jesus, the proof of fatherhood is the ease to release. It says, if you be evil, know how to give good gifts. That means as evil as you are, there is still a component of fatherhood. Did you know that many terrorists have families? And as dangerous and evil as they are, they still have compassion to take care of their children. He said, if you be evil, know how to give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father? I believe in the power of God. I believe in miracles, I believe in signs, I believe in wonders. One genuine manifestation of the power of God can preach a thousand messages at once. Believe me when I tell you this. The woman at the well, when she had an encounter with Jesus, listen carefully, she had an encounter with Jesus and we began to prophetically open her up to her life and her destiny, letting her see the state of her life. The Bible says she discerned that he was a prophet and then they began their discourse and ended with the subject of worship. The Bible says she left that business there of fetching water and she ran to the city. Everyone who encountered Jesus and his his power was too grateful to keep quiet. The system of evangelism and advancing the gospel as it is today is too slow. If we want to win souls per one, per discussion, per argument, it would take us a thousand years before we reach the 7.6 billion people thereabout. But one manifestation of the power of God. That woman ran and said, come see a man who had told me everything. And they came and they encountered Jesus and their lives changed. How about the madman in Gadara? 
one single manifestation of the power of God brought ten cities to Jesus. Could it be that many of our family members have not been convinced to be so passionate about the things of the kingdom because we have proposed so many things about God without the requisite level of power to prove that reality? The assignment of power is to prove to creation that God's word is not a lie. Power has an assignment to prove that the word of God is not a lie. If the power of God is absent in the life of a believer, no matter what it is that you propose, sooner or later, people will burn it in their minds that this is just theory. We were not anointed to present a theoretical Jesus. The reality of the faith life can be proven here and now. Jesus came as a manifestation of the love of the Father so that everything God said in Scripture, Jesus acted it out. If the Bible said God is love, Jesus demonstrated that love as he healed the sick, as he opened doors for people. And that is the kind of ministry we have been given. Someone shout power. Let the devil hear you. It takes power to heal the sick. It takes more than compassion. It takes power to declare over destinies and shift that atmosphere. I came here tonight with a strong burden in my heart, hoping and trusting that we truly will encounter the power of God. Three things will happen tonight. Number one, the first thing that I trust that would happen is that we are going to allow the power of God find expression to roll away burdens, roll away shame and reproach, and everything that has defied the name of the Lord. Number two, more than being a witness to the power of God flowing through a man, I am praying that tonight you will become that vessel that will host such levels of spiritual power that you will leave this place and for the remaining part of the conference, building upon what happens tonight, that by the end of this conference, you will stand truly and know that you are ready to be a witness that when people come to you they will not only hear they will both hear and see listen the goodness and the love of god was not just to be believed you can taste and see that the lord is good you can taste and see that the lord is good I've had the honor and the privilege of talking with so many people by reason of the privilege of this call. And sir, I am amazed at the kinds of trouble, the kinds of situations that you see people go through while they smile. You cannot imagine the kind of situation, medical reports that are death sentences, financial situations, demonic situations. All kinds of troubles. And most times believers just box this in hope that one day God will step in. Can I tell you, my Bible says there remained a rest for the people of God. Even though they are the people of God, there is a rest they have refused to enter. It says today if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did. That means they were given a chance to enter that rest. But through unbelief, they could not enter that rest. It says to labor so that we will enter that rest. Are we blessed? Yes. Encounter with the power of God. You need the power of God in your life. In the name of Jesus. And you see, when we talk about the power of God, the power of God is literally God's ability to produce His dimension of results in a man. The power of God is God's ability, not his kind of ability. The very ability of God working in a man to produce results that only God can produce. Can I tell you this? There are certain results in this earth realm that men unassisted cannot produce. 
If it is the Lord's doing, the Bible says, it is marvelous. There is a way you can do business that people know that this is just intellectual acumen. This is, this is just a human being stretching his creativity. There is a way you can do ministry. There is a way you can live your life. But when that engracing of the Spirit comes upon you, like we discussed in the morning, your life becomes supernatural by every standard. How in the world do you look at a sick person, someone who has been diagnosed for 10 years, say, and with one word, in the name of Jesus be healed, and that person will check and the pain is gone. No, it takes more than intelligent communication. Behind those words, there is the power of God. The power of God. The power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you tonight to the power of God to not only heal, the power of God to not only save. Can I tell you this? The power of God is akin to light. I shared this while we were having service. If a room is left dark for 20 years, if a room is left dark for 10 years, if a room is left dark for one week, if a room is left dark for one hour, how long does it take when you switch on the light for the room to be illuminated? Does it matter that the room has been dark for 20 years? This is how the power of God works. It doesn't matter how long the challenge has been there. The light will not respect the longevity of the darkness. At the instant the light comes, the darkness goes. So do not be surprised that in a moment, you will find out that the debt that would have taken five years for you to pay, that whilst you are in service, God is already moving by His power. Please sit down. Let me tell you three, three very important information about the power of God. Number one, the power of God is creative. The power of God creates. To create means to make a reality that did not exist to appear. The power of God is creative. It can create. Even God who quickened the dead and called those things that be not as though they were. That means it is possible for me to have and to carry something now that does not exist around my life. The power of God is creative. Number two, the power of God is corrective. It can correct any anomaly. My goodness. That when the power of God comes, you see, please look up. The power of God functions like medicine, like a drug. If, say, for instance, a gentleman is suffering from, say, malaria or headache or whatever it is. Does he put the drug on his head? Does he put the drug on his leg? Maybe not necessarily. He will swallow that drug. He does not have to tell the drug where to go to. You just swallow it. Designed in the drug. The drug knows where to go and correct that problem. Is that true? Now watch this. When you swallow that drug, you keep looking where... You will know what the drug is doing by the correction that begins to happen. That's how the word of God functions. When it is introduced to your life, your family, your destiny, you just leave the power of God. It will go around your life, checking for what part of your life is not like the Garden of Eden. Listen to me. And it does not stop until it corrects. So when the power of God comes to your life, it can literally turn your life to the direction that is right. The power of God does not just create, it can correct. Apostle, I have a medical report here that I have a situation that cannot be corrected medically. Let the power of God do that job. It can correct. Are we together? When you understand the creative dimension of the Word of God, 
it will conquer fear and doubt. Because for most people, because we, we are accustomed to the scientific realm, the physical realm, the question like Mary is, how shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. It was a legitimate question. The angel's answer is my answer to you. The power of the highest shall overshadow you. So, I'm seated right here with a health condition. Apostle, are you saying in a moment that that medical report, that blood condition will leave? Question. Please look at me. The Bible says even the old earth and the old heaven will pass away. What is in your body that cannot pass away? If the earth itself can pass away. Hallelujah. I am, I am a recipient of the power of God. Not just a custodian of it. I have been... I have been blessed. I know what the power of God can do in the life of an individual. Please hear me. Whenever you find out that there is a mountain that stands before you and you've exhausted everything you know to do, I want you to step back and allow the power of God. The power of God is able to create. The power of God is able to correct. Apostle, where will this breakthrough come from? As I'm seated here now, I wish I knew who would help me. Don't worry. The Word of God has that assignment. It is able to bring that possibility into your life. Please, I want you to believe everything that I'm saying because that is what will happen to you shortly. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you see, the thing about the power of God is that you do not have to debate the presence or the absence of it. The evidences will be clear. Whether it is there or not. As simple and as honest as that. It is impossible to be too hungry and not know. It is impossible to be too full and not know. It is impossible to be heavily pregnant and not know. Under normal circumstances. Anything you have in a lavish dimension you must know. Many of you have been anointed, but it's like you are not anointed. God wants to step you to a level where even demons and devils will know that an engraving from heaven has come upon your life tonight. If you are in agreement with me, say Amen. amen. Power to change situations. Power to provide supernatural solutions to the needs of men. The power of God is not just limited to healings and deliverances. You must understand this. The power of God also engraces you to provide all kinds of supernatural solutions. The third thing about the power of God that I want you to know is that the power of God brings ease to the life of a man. Believe me, the power of God brings ease to the life of a man. One time, I don't know what led me to that, that, that channel, that page on the, on the internet, on YouTube. I was watching and I was watching how these metals crush and recycle cars. So they just throw something and the metal will crush it. But then they threw one metal that was made of steel and the machine just stopped. It couldn't crush it. Couldn't crush it. And I said, wow, I'm learning something here. Then they took it to a bigger machine. And as soon as they dropped it there, it squeezed that metal like orange. I said, that's it. So, the possibilities in our lives are not just based on the love of God. The possibilities in our lives are based on the kind and the dimension of power that is at work in you. Are we together now? Let me tell you very quickly how the power of God works and then we begin to pray. The power of God works like money. I like to use money for an example because I have learned by experience that people really understand it when you use money. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if I have, say, a thousand naira, I have money. A thousand naira may be able to buy this. Why? Because this is still within the range of that price. But a thousand naira may not be able to buy a vehicle. Are we together now? So, if the challenge in front of me is to buy water, I am safe. 
because a thousand naira can attend to that need. But if the challenge is now to buy a vehicle, I will need to have multiples of what I am holding. So he says, grace and peace be multiplied. Because, listen carefully, there are challenges that you may confront that the level of power you carry may not be able to solve. This is a very powerful teaching. Listen, do you know as a man of God, I can have someone say having headache, whatever pain, a financial problem, whatever demonic oppression, and in the name of Jesus, I can pray for that person. Can I be honest with you? The only problems in that man's life that will be solved through that prayer and that ministration would be the problems that are under the kind of grace I carry. So it is possible that out of the ten challenges he has, only two will be solved. He may fall down as usual and stand up, but only two because that is on the spiritual currency. That is how far I could go in helping him. Now you will understand Acts chapter 10 and verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It's not just that he was anointed. Look at the extent he was anointed. So that whatever problem you had, that grace was sufficient to solve it. This is also the reason why, even though he has anointed us, we continue to contend for deeper and greater levels of power. Why? Because as the problems of men continue to multiply, as the arsenals of darkness come up with all kinds of problems, we must have the sufficient engraving to solve every problem that we confront. The degree to which you can solve the problems of men is the degree to which you are a blessing. And if it is true that the Bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed, then we must continue to contend. Why do I have to pray and contend for greater levels of power when I am already seeing a measure? Because you see, there are some things that that level cannot do. The disciples came and asked Jesus and said, Why couldn't we do this? And Jesus told them, he said, This kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. The prayer and fasting does something to you that increases your capacity to respond to that situation. Are we together? You know, I look back at my life and I am surprised today at how certain things happened cheaply that were so difficult in time past. Even though I was anointed, even though I had the power of God, but I did not understand that the needs of men can only attend to the level of power. You've heard me say, every challenge is relative to the grace that confronts it. It is possible to stay around struggling over a situation and to make God look powerless in the face of that situation. And someone will come with a higher level of grace and not even pray any prayer. Just bring that present and you find that problem just melts just like that. With all humility, I look at some of the situations that God has used me to solve in the life of people today. Did you know that these were the same situations that years ago I would struggle over and wonder what, what is wrong? Is it that I'm not anointed? Is it that I'm not using the name of Jesus? The difference was growth and increase. This is why he can measure a thousand cubits even though you are the river. Just because you are the river does not mean that you have everything. Then he measured a thousand cubits. I sense that there are some of us who are here tonight. It is time for that thousand cubits to be measured for you. Because you see, the level God is taking you to. Can I tell you how God honors you? God honors you by exposing you to people who have greater levels of problems. So that with the greater anointing, when you are able to solve their problems, then your honor is greater. Is someone learning tonight? Our world today does not ignore the reality of power at work in a man. Now it is the desperation for power is so strong that whether it is diabolic power, it is whatever power, let it just be power that works. People who want to benefit from it first before they verify and ask for forgiveness if necessary. But in the meantime, they don't have that time for any discussion. The moment they see anything that carries a semblance of power to provide results, 
they will run. So whilst we are giving all kinds of explanations in the church and saying, don't go to Habalis, don't go to all kinds of diabolic people, if we do not rise and contend for superior levels of power in this end time, we will be surprised how people will leave the church wall and immediately after our beautiful speaking, they have heard, but they want to see in some other place. Are we together? One more time, shout power. It takes power to dislodge the arsenals of darkness that plague our children, that plague our lives, that plague our destinies, all kinds of demonic things. I marvel at the skills that Satan has employed so far in, in bringing troubles to people's lives. As I interact with people and as I talk with people, sometimes I, I get so emotional, I cannot imagine how determined Satan is to keep people in a way that never brings glory to God. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in your ways, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit. This conference is called Encounter. Encounter is more than a discussion. It's an experience. So when Jesus is ready to use a man, the way he prepares that man is to submit that man through seasons of dealings. Dealings that prune you, dealings that break you. Listen carefully. When God calls you, He does not empower you. Anointing is not what follows calls. When God calls you, He does not call you to ministry, He calls you to Himself. And it is a season of uncomfortable dealing and breaking. But when you pass through that season with Him, and he's ready to send you. He does not only send you with a message. He sends you with the backing of heaven. The backing of heaven. And when you stand and deliver that message in truth, that backing is ready to speak for you, to bring healings and to validate, number one, that Jesus is Lord. Number two, that you are truly sent. The anointing I've taught you that is, is a system of legitimization. That means if you claim you came from God with a message from God, then the people will want to hear and to see. And the assignment of that anointing is to prove to men, among other reasons, that you are not an illegitimate communicator of the counsel of God. So when you speak and God backs you, it's his signature upon your life and within that environment, I send him. Are we together? Because some of you will leave this meeting tonight in a hurry. And you will get back home and stand and say, Okay, when Saul left his father's house, he could not do much. But now Saul has returned as a prophet. Saul is not just returning as one who is looking for the father's donkey. So the encounter is twofold. Number one, to experience the grace that is so lavishly given. But number two, that you not only experience it, you become a conduit of that grace. And then in addition to all of the other parts of the conference down till Sunday, you will now know that I'm a career of higher grace. And in case you are saying, Apostle, I've, I think I'm anointed. The question is how many supernatural solutions has that level of anointing brought to men? And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was to my feet. And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was to my knees. And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was to my loins. And he measured a thousand cubits, and it was a river overflowing. And the Bible says, everywhere the river went to the fish that was dead came back to life. By reason of that overflowing anointing. 
I also sense that tonight there are many of you who there will be a restoration of graces and dimensions. Dimensions in the spirit you once walked in. But for some reason, that visionary experience you used to have just seems to have faded away. That, that intuitiveness, that level of favor, when you came into this city, it was like you were a magnet. But now, it looks like everything is gone. Find hope. The power of God can restore. The power of God can restore. The power of God can restore. My goodness, I already sense such a strong anointing here already. The power of God can restore. Another powerful thing about the power of God before we pray is that the power of God can bring acceleration. This is, very, this is a, a, a very powerful feature of the power of God. Acceleration. When it has to do with acceleration, the hand of God can come upon a man and can fast track your life. Listen, if two of us start a journey here, we are supposed to run at the same pace. Whoever goes ahead is the one who arrives first. But when the power of God is introduced to the life of a man, he can pick you from that level. Pick you on a flight. Here's what the Bible says. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew. So this is the business of strength he's talking about. Are we together now? He says they will mount up with wings. He's still talking about strength. The moment he begins to talk about wings, he's talking about speed. He's talking about time. They will mount up with wings as the eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Elijah ran on barefoot by the power of God. And he overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel. Someone tonight as you are encountering this power, listen. It, it, it truly will walk like a dream. As you will see God just push you to levels that you cannot even explain. You just know you are moving by the Spirit to dimensions that you cannot explain. Can I tell you this? Do not forbear with evil tonight. Do not forbear with anything that does not name the name of Christ. Do not give excuses. You are going to pray and you will insist that everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God as revealed from Scripture, tonight is the night you will wave it a final goodbye. Can you rise up on your feet as we pray in one minute? It's going to be very, very fast so that we don't keep us uh, too long here. But then I want you to pray from the depth of your heart. Please lift your voice and pray. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Pray. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your life. Pray over your destiny. Pray over your health. The new season by the Spirit of the Living God. Following online, here in the auditorium, lift your voice and pray. Man of God, you are praying. The new season. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let me say this. By the grace of God, I want to assure you by the Spirit of the living God that God has granted us by the privilege of His grace, the wisdom and the word compliancy to dispense the gifts of the Spirit within the boundary of Scripture. You need not fear regardless the extremities of the manifestations 
by the grace of God, we are dealing here with a system that honors God and is consistent with the ways of God. So every prophetic word, every manifestation of the Spirit, and every administration of the power of God that will happen here, I want you to trust that it will happen within the boundary of Scripture. Find confidence and let your heart be open to receive. I say this because I know that many of us may have had all kinds of experiences with the prophetic experiences, with the miraculous, and chances are that when the power of God is about to dispense be dispensed on this wise, there can be that fear we can close our hearts in a bid to escape error, in a bid to not get into anything that is extra biblical. I want you to know that we love Jesus, we fear him, and he's cultured us and trained us well. We came out of the experience, the dealing of the spirit. It's not just an anointing that came. We were taught and we were sent. So find confidence that the administration of the power of God as you will be experiencing here will be within the boundary of scripture aimed at revealing Jesus and bringing him glory. Are we together? Now you pray, Father, let your power touch me. Let it rest upon my life. Let it change my life. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now please listen to me. Listen to me. Uh, for the sake of space, when if for any reason there is a call to bring out those under the anointing, may I request that we just maintain the gaps at the edges so that we don't, the space here is limited so that we can honor the servants of God just here, right now. And then we are going to be very very fast on this i'm going to be praying for the sick but right now i just saw light and without shouting without doing anything just bring all the people under the anointing now as the power of god begins to fall on people right now as i'm speaking the power of god and the light of god just from the left to the right i just saw that light right now please bring them the power of God is going to begin to rest on people. And this anointing that is coming on people is for restoration. This is what I am seeing in the spirit. And there are people here who have been tied down. There are people here who the Lord is bringing restoration. Please bring all of them out right now. I stretch my hands and I decree and declare. May that grace for restoration rest upon you. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, right to the back. It, it, it's something you can't stand. We're talking about the power of God here. From the left to the right, the extreme of this auditorium. Please, whether you are an usher or not, just do well to help anyone under the anointing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, let there be restoration. Let there be restoration. May that grace rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring them out. Who is grace? I'm hearing the name grace. Who is grace? Is there anyone with that name? I presume that there may be lots of people. Grace. This person I'm talking about, you are wearing, I'm seeing like white and yellow. You are wearing a trouser. Is there somebody like that? You are wearing white and yellow. That's what I'm describing. Who is that? I can't see anybody. Oh, I see. The Lord is saying it's a new season for this lady. I don't know who she is, but in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a woman five years. Five years. You are yet to have the fruit of the womb. You are yet to give birth. Five years. You are on this road. God is telling me you are here. Is there someone like that here? Just here. We have to hurry up for time. Please, if you find her, let her come. Your life is about to change. Madam, run and come to Jesus. Here at House on the Rock, he's giving you an encounter. At most feet, sheep now, change the road. Please let them.
Let's go. Like a short form of a whole name, Nika. Is there someone with such a name, Madam? You are the one. I'm seeing the Lord is saying number one. I don't know what it is. I hope you are not embarrassed. Can I talk to you? The Lord is shifting something in your body. This is what I'm seeing. Please lay your hand on your stomach. I don't know what it is, but the Lord is telling me that He's bringing you a miracle. This is what I'm. Is it your husband, sir? Can I pray for you, ma'am? In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. I do not know you, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, I declare right now that this thing that does not name the name of Christ, let it leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. How long have you been trusting? You are all... Huh? Your grace. Please bring for me two people that shout loud right now under the anointing. There is such, I just saw lights, that fire. This is a very loud shout. I want to pray. Please, I want you to believe, even if it is 10 minutes, I want you to know that something must rest upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of the living God. I'm seeing this one, two, three, the third row. The third row here, there are some of you, the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this row. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. Those trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I, I ask them to come out. Are they here? I want you to believe in Jesus. Don't worry, just take your eyes away from whatever medical reports. Believe in Jesus. I want to pray for you. The power of God is coming on one of you right now. We're going to make this very fast. I just saw that fire come on one of you. And in the name of Jesus, I declare, according to the time of life, please just place your hand on your stomach if you can. Why is she here? She was under the anointing there. Look at me, madam. You believe in Jesus? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! In the name of Jesus, I declare, this that I see on you, let it loose now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Gone forever, never to return again. In the name of Jesus, and for all of you who are here, I decree and declare, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, according to the time of life, return with miracles, children. House on the rock, agree with them, return with miracles, children. Return with miracles, children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please quickly return to your seat. Someone among... The people who are ministering here to Hila, I just saw the power of God. That's where the choir is. There's one of you. I know that maybe right now, the Lord is saying to that one person that you are stepping into a new season. A new season by the power of the Holy Spirit. A new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. A new season. There are four men of God here. You are in ministry. I just saw a strong anointing resting upon you. Four people. I know that we may pray for other people, but I don't know where the four people are. By the Spirit of God, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, this grace for a new season in ministry. Let it rest upon you now. Let it rest upon you now. My friend, there's a gentleman on suit. This man, lift your hands. I just saw light coming on you. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be a new season for you. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Shali Tarus Kadima Kashobrata Siata. Who works here with FIRST? That's Federal Inland. I just saw that name, FIRST. You are wearing white. No, not this man. You are, it's like you are somewhere there. Is there some, please come. Your life is about to change. Please verify. Is there someone to, where do you, God bless you sir, where do you work sir? FIRST. Yes. How long have you been there? For 10 years now. 10 years. I want to, because I'm seeing you climb a ladder. It's a new season for you. Can I pray for you? Who works with Indians? I'm seeing a man and I'm seeing Indians. Is there someone like that? You work with it? Oh dear. Yes. You work with Indians? Come. I want to pray for you, sir. I'm looking at you and in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing like a scepter given to you. And the Lord is saying it's a new season. This thing will happen within the next six months. The way God will move you, it will surprise you. You believe what I'm saying? And now I, I don't mean to speak against any tribe, but what I'm hearing, you see, when God places, when God is determined to lift you, whether it's a donkey, whether it's a cyrus, he will use anyone and anything to lift you. This is what is happening to you. I pray for you by the Spirit of the living God. Joining faith with the servants of God here, I decree and declare, according to the word of the Lord, let it be for you now. In Jesus' name. And for you, my brother, may the Lord help you. In Jesus' name. I want to pray for someone. I don't want you to be embarrassed. I usually would not do this except that God asked me to do it. You are a driver. But I want to pray because you have been seeing yourself starting a business. I want to pray for you. Your life is going to change. This is what you do. It's like you drive. That's what I'm saying. But you are about to start a business. And the Lord wants me to just pray and speak over your life. If there's someone like that. Uh, I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing a man wearing blue. Complete blue. This is what I'm seeing. Come. Don't be embarrassed. This is the house of God. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. My friend, please come. Can I tell you, listen, listen. The house of God is a place of power. God does not just bring successful people. He makes successful people out of the house. Are we together now? Let me use this opportunity to decree already over someone. That in the name of Jesus, whatever level you have seen now, by prophecy I push you to the next level. Step into a new season. Step into a new season. Step into a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. What do you do, sir? You drive your own private vehicle? Your own private vehicle? Yeah. I do Uber. Okay, no. Uber. You two, same thing. And this man? Not my own son. But you're driving someone. So where are you from? I'm from Adam Austin, sir. Hmm. I want to pray for you. Look at me. I'm seeing the Lord use agriculture to lift you in a way that will surprise you. This man, I don't know you from anywhere, but God is connecting you. Agriculture is what I see God using to honor and bless you and to lift you. And I stretch my hands, my friend. May the power that makes this happen, let it rest upon you. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, sirs, by the Spirit of the living God. And seeing according to that vision, you starting a business, may the grace that makes things work, in the name of Jesus, may that grace rest upon you. All of you, in the name of Jesus, within months, you will return with tears from testimonies. In the marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, I want to pray. I believe in speed. There truly is a grace for speed. Destiny is a function of time. And whatever impedes you has taken a portion of your destiny. Is it alright if I minister that grace upon you? 
truly there is a grace for speed. Speed of accomplishment. I want to pray for you. Now every time I pray this, guess what I want you to do? Please, I want you to help those who will begin to run by the Spirit so that we don't have any injuries. The power of God will rest on people and live freely. They will find themselves running by the Spirit. The hand of God is resting upon them. I don't know, I don't have any personal relationship with this woman who ministered. But madam, I don't know what it is that you have to do with United Kingdom. Because I'm, I, just, I just had a vision and I saw you in UK. And I don't know what this is, maybe a program you are going or something God is doing for you and your husband. Is it alright if I just speak over you? In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever it is that is in UK that is for you, in the name of Jesus, let it look for you until it enters your hand. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree this and I declare it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray that grace for speed. My head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I am anointed with fresh oil. Ah. My head is exalted like the horn. I stretch my hands right now. Everyone here who has suffered any kind of delay, there is a strong anointing coming on you right now. At the count of three, one, two, my God, help them. Three, take that place. Take that place. Three, all over the building. I declare and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. Healing ministry. Healing ministry. Healing your life. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you. I release you by the prophet. Run like Elijah. Many of you will stand to testify here that at this conference the Lord shifted you to, to seasons and realms beyond your imagination. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. The Bible says, Wherefore God has so highly exalted him and given him a name. And it says that name is above every other name. That at the mention of that name, every knee shall bow. I want to rebuke every wind that has been causing the storm to rage for you. There are spirits that are back of the tragedy in the lives of men. There are spirits that are back. Sir, can I pray for you, this man? I don't know who you are. But I just saw light coming on you. And I want to pray for you because the Lord is taking you to a level beyond your imagination. I stretch my hands towards you, sir, and I declare. Let this anointing rest upon you. Let it be a new season for you. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, and that everything that does not name the name of Christ in your life, let it give way right now. I want to pray for you. Listen to me. Paul was speaking to the church in Thessalonica. And he said, I desire to come to you again, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan can use manifestations of spirits, systems and structures to block people from making progress. I want to declare against any spirit that is not of the Christ. And the moment I pray, 
Please, anyone who is manifesting here, you just help them so they don't injure themselves. Are we together now? My God. Hallelujah. 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 Every spirit that is not of the Christ, tormenting lives and destinies, tying down the glory of people. I want to pray for you. And at the count of three, I want you to shout that name that is above every other name. Exalted above every name, every throne, every dominion. And hear me at that count. If God be God, then everything that has held you down, even if it is very cold. Parakata. Are you ready now? At the count of three. One, two, three, shout Jesus. I command every spirit. Help them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives, according to scripture, shall be delivered. I'm still praying. Some of you are standing here for your families, not just for yourself. If there is any one of your family members under any kind of yoke of captivity, because you are here at this conference, I bring life to them now. Victory to them now. Freedom to them now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here, you work in Access Bank. I just saw that logo, Access Bank. I want to pray for the sick now, but the Lord just gave me this word. Gentlemen, you work in Access Bank. In fact, it's like you came from the bank to this place. You are wearing a, you are wearing it. Uh, okay, come, but I'm seeing in my vision, it's like blue. It's a light blue. But you come for this. Well, okay. You work in Access Bank? Please come. Both of you, all of you. I'm seeing four people. This is what I'm seeing. One, two, three. But I'm seeing a fourth person again. Access Bank, sir. God bless you. Can I pray for you, sir? Listen, let me tell you this. Every gift and every grace that God gives a man is not for that man. It's for the body of Christ. I can assure you that the days of superstar Christianity is over. We are here as vessels revealing Jesus, joining our hands as the body of Christ to exalt Jesus and show the world that he is alive. This is what this is all about. This is not about Joshua Selman. This is not about some man of God. Thank God for the gift. But I can tell you we are only ushers with direct men to Jesus to help them know that he is alive. Are we together? If you ever find yourself being mightily and marvelously used by God, let me encourage you. Do not be ashamed to let the nations know that your assignment is to project Jesus. It is only when he is lifted up that he draws men to himself. Are we blessed? I want to pray for you, sir. How long have you been in Access Bank? 
Will you believe what I'll tell you? Yes, sir. That your time here is almost coming to an end? Yes, sir. But you've seen it. Yes. It's not something I'm just saying. Yes. You've seen it. Yes. And that the Lord is going to lift you. Yes. You are in Abuja here. Yes. What is taking you to Lagos? Because I'm seeing you go to Lagos. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, my brothers, I agree with you. Standing on the grace of your pastor, I decree and declare. A strong anointing is coming on you, my brother. This man I prophesy to. And in the name of Jesus, God is going to connect you to a very wealthy man. And that man will be used by God to change your life. May that grace rest on you. So let it be in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, stars, by the power that raised Christ from the dead. May the Lord show you favor. May the Lord show you mercy. In the name of Jesus, you will go and prosper. You will go and experience increase. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing the cry of a baby. And it's a baby boy. And the Lord is telling me there is a family. You've had a child but you are trusting God for a boy. I don't know who that person is. And you are in, you are in front. Where are you coming from, madam? Is that true? I, I, I hope you are not embarrassed. Can I pray for you? You believe in miracles? Yes, sir. Madam, you are a member of this church? No, sir. Now, where, no matter where you are, let, do me a favor. When the boy comes, come and stand here and testify. <laughs> sorry, so sorry. I hope it's not you. My dear, you are trusting God for this miracle? Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! That is it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, I pray for you. Where is your husband? I want to pray for you. There is a marvelous financial miracle. This be even beyond this prayer that I'm praying that is coming for you and your husband. But I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. A strong anointing is coming upon you now. And in the name of Jesus, this grace, this grace is what will make this prophetic word come to pass. I release that grace upon you right now. In the name of Jesus. And for my sister here, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands and I decree and declare. According to the word of the Lord and for the glory of the King, let this be for you. In Jesus' name. Did I pray for you, sir? I can't even remember why he's out. FIRS, I want to pray for you. Please stand up, sir. How long have you worked there? Ten years. Huh? Ten years ago. Ten years. And seeing you have something to do with politics or a politician, what, huh? what, do you, what else do you do? That's all you do. I want you, do not fight it. When that drive for politics comes, it's in your destiny. God has shown you this thing already. Even before you started working, I release that grace upon you now. May the grace that makes this happen. Listen, let me tell you this. The church, God has given the church and he has given vessels in the church. Certain graces called a kingmaker anointing. A kingmaker never sits on that throne himself, but he can enthrone and dethrone. The church is actively part of government. Are we together? Yes. Just close to the people sitting at the front here, I'm seeing the power of God come on one person. Um, just this, like this, right there, this row. I don't know why, but it's just a miracle. I'm going to pray for the sick right now, but I stretch my hand in the name of Jesus Christ. May that strong anointing rest upon you supernaturally. Let it shift you to a new season by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can I just take out five minutes to pray for the sick? My sincere apologies. I know that there are people who have come here trusting God for healing. Do you believe in healing miracles? Please lay your hands. Here's what I want you to do for me. I've been given a bit of time, but I will not abuse that, that privilege, so we'll still walk within the boundary of the time given. But here's what I want you to do. I'm going to pray a simple prayer in the name of Jesus. Remember my illustration about light and darkness? Because that light is about to come up right now. Are we together? And I'm going to pray for you in mass. 
the power of God is coming on one person with hepatitis now the power of God I'm going to pray for everyone but that one person you will be healed right now right at the back that's what I'm saying is there someone like that right at the back you are healed now of hepatitis right there in the name of Jesus now I'm going to pray for you and as soon as I pray for you I want you to please check yourself we're not pretending this is no show this is the power of God I want you to check yourself the moment you find out that a miracle has happened let's have it even if it's just one or two testimonies of the marvelous hand of God and then I just speak over your life and we're done is that fine please lay your hands very quickly I want to pray for you I believe in miracles I truly believe in miracles blood conditions negative medical reports you are here working miracles I work I worship you. You are here. Turn the lights around. I worship you. I worship you. The healing power of Jesus is moving across this place now. Now. Two things will happen and the healing power of Jesus will begin to touch people. Two people are going to start running out by the anointing. Please hold them wherever they are. Honestly, I don't know why God does these things sometimes, but they are just signs and wonders. When that happens, the healing power of Jesus will begin to move. Two people, literally, the power of God will come upon them. That's one there. Now I can pray. How God does these things and why he does it, sometimes there are signs and wonders. There is one more person right now. The power of God, literally. The person will start running. Please just hold the person so he doesn't enjoy himself. And then I begin to... It's very funny how these things work sometimes. Now I'm ready to pray. Hallelujah. Please lay your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, please shout a believing Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke every spirit that is part of every infirmity, every disease. I command by the power that raised Christ from the dead, be gone now in the name of Jesus. And every sickness, Every infirmity in the name of Jesus the Christ of God be healed now. Blood conditions be healed now. My God, my God, my God, such a wave of glory. The anointing is just sweeping across the length and the breadth of this place. Healing is coming. I'm seeing the Lord heal lungs, lungs like lungs, breast lungs be healed right now. Be healed right now. Help them please. Be healed, my God. Be healed right now. There's someone having severe pain around the lower back area. Severe pain. In fact, I'm literally feeling that pain. My own back. I decree and declare right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Madam, the woman laying her hands on her head. I just saw oil. Keep that hand on your head. I saw oil coming on you and the Lord is saying this infirmity goes now. I stretch my hands. Be healed now. Be healed now. The power of God is touching you right where you are. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus. Headache, migraine headache goes now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Anyone having any malignant growth or any kind of growth whatsoever we command that growth to dissolve from your body now cancer be healed in the name of jesus
there's someone God is healing you, you don't have to come out. But what we know as impotency, the Lord is healing someone of that condition right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone you have breathing problems. You really cannot breathe like breathe normally. The power of God is touching you. A miracle is happening to you right now. Right now, right now. A miracle is happening. Please help her, help her, help her. Just hold her. She's coming out by the anointing so she doesn't fall. Be healed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Peptic ulcer. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Now, the Lord is showing me, I'm seeing someone there is, it looks like a boil, but it comes out in a particular part of your body. You keep treating it and treating it and it keeps coming again. The power of God is touching you right where you are. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone, you came here with severe pain. I'm seeing pain around your shoulder here. You are at the back. The power of God has touched you. In the name of Jesus, every other situation be healed right now. Be healed right now. In fact, there's someone you are having, um, I don't know what this is called. It's, it's not, yes, your throat, like tonsillitis. Severe pain, you almost cannot swallow. As soon as I'm done praying, you check yourself. That devil leaves your throat right now. Someone, your left eye, your left eye, seems you don't see very clearly with your left eye. The power of God is coming upon you now. And I declare that that blood vision is, is perfected now. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. Every blind eye be open, whether partial or total blindness, be healed now. Hear me? If there is anyone here who cannot walk well, whether you're on a crutch or you're on a wheelchair, stand up now. In the name of Jesus. Any pain around your limbs, in the name of Jesus, if you're on crutches, I release the power of God to heal right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And seeing someone who has struggled with pile, please hold on. This is a very severe case of pile. Very severe case of pile. The power of God is coming on you. You will know you are healed because the pain leaves you now. The pain leaves you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Um, I don't know what medical condition is it that prohibits eating starch. But I'm seeing someone, your a doctor was warning you to not eat starch because of a medical condition you have. The power of God, I don't know who that person is, but the power of God is touching you right now. Now for sake of time, whether or not I mention your case, from the crown of your head, even to the soles of your feet, be healed now! Be healed now! My sister, that lady waving her hand, I'm seeing the power of God come on your stomach. There is something that is going out right now. I decree and declare, I stretch my hands towards you. Let that devil leave you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly, some of you, even whilst you were under the anointing, something happened to you. I want you to check yourself. We have just two minutes. I don't want to abuse the time. We need to shame the devil here at House on the Rock, the refuge. Are we together? Wherever you are, check yourself. The moment you find out that you could do something you couldn't do, please be very bold. I'd like you to use either this place or that place. Celebrate them. People are coming out. If I can have just one or two of the pastors or just... Just someone, so we take one or two testimonies. Check your vision, check everything. Is this how you celebrate miracles, my God? Is this how you celebrate miracles? Keep coming, check yourself. Check yourself. Check yourself. Don't sit back. And hold on. Those of you watching and following online, miracles are also happening in your homes, your offices, whatever you are. I want you, you can call in, you can send through whatever platform, the emails that may be displayed. Let the house on the rock here, the refuge, know that Jesus is touching you right where you are. In the name of Jesus. Yes sir, just a few. 
Hold on, oh, just, just, just a moment. Okay. Hello, Apostle. Yes, sir. Uh, when you talk about the fire, the one of the reasons, one of the, the, the reasons why I'm in this service, I'm not a member of the church, but one of the reasons was because of this fire matter. I even came with the drug. I've been taking Where it. Where is the drug? Oh, I see. I've been taking it. It's inside, it's inside my bag. What happened to you now? It's gone. Maybe you said oh, the pain. Then it's gone. <laughs> We have another miracle here, yes, sir. Very quickly, my God. Just, just, we are not going to stay here for too long. Go ahead. Just be patient. Yes, go ahead. Coming to church, I had a sore throat. I don't know, I was not breathing well for there on my chest. Oh, the lady that was running out. Yes. Check it now. Yes. Anything. It's gone. Yes, Completely gone. It never returns to you right now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes, please. Oh, praise the Lord. Um, I'm a medical doctor and my job entails that I stand a lot in theaters, doing ward rounds. So I've been feeling this pain on my right toe and the feet. I keep telling myself I'm going to see an orthopedic surgeon, but I never had the time to see one. Today the pain becomes, became so intense during the ward round that I had to, take, I had to sit down and stop work. But of course, I had to stand up and continue work. So, yes. During the prayer, I was standing and there was a lot of pain, but I kept standing. What happened? And I just want to bless the name of the Lord. And right Check yourself. now, the pain is no longer Check. there. Any pain? The Completely the gone. The Check yourself. Gone. It never returns to you again in Jesus' name. Is that yes, please? Hold on. Just um, blood vision. Blood so vision. Have, uh, blood vision, like. I can't How long? see this. What's your name, my dear? Happiness. Happiness. Yes, sir. How long? Um, going to eight nine years now. What couldn't you read when you came? Um, the screen. Oh, I can't really see your face clearly. I was using glasses. You were using glasses. Yes. Where are the glasses? I can't find it when I fell down. I don't know whether somebody. And right now you can see. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Yes. We have a here. To thank God because I was having blood vision. You were having God. blood vision. Yes, and immediately the man of God prayed the blood vision seed. Secondly, I want to thank God because He manifested the spot in my life in a different dimension today. The Lord. Praise the Lord. I've been having shoulder pain for several months now, and when the man of God prayed, the shoulder pain just left. Check yourself. Any pain, completely gone. In the name of Jesus, it never returns to you by the power Praise of the Holy the Spirit. Praise the Lord. My name is Philip. I actually came here with a severe ne new problem, pain. I was supposed to see, go to see Dr. Press tomorrow. That's my appointment tomorrow. But while the prayer was going on, something hit me seriously. Oh my God. Check yourself. And I'm bringing you in, sir. Supernatural healing in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I work in a hospital too, so I do a lot of standing. Are you seeing what God is doing to the medical people? So I, I've been having this pain from my neck, shoulder, and this part of my body, but right now I can't feel. Before now, I can't even bend down. And I've been doing physiotherapy for like three weeks now, but I don't feel any pain. Completely anymore. bend down. Check yourself. Any pain. Any pain. Completely gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. It will never return to you again by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, yes. Praise the Lord. Um, I was having this shoulder pain and ankle, so we are about to travel soon to check for trials like football. So, You're a footballer? Yes, sir. So last week, Friday, I went to training, then I got ankle, then my shoulder, but now, after the prayers, I'm feeling normal. Check yourself. <laughs> May the Lord prosper you in the name of Jesus Christ. We have Maybe one or two more and then we're done. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. While I was there, I felt a very sharp pain in my tummy. And the moment I fell under the anointing, that was all. That was the end. What happened to you? The pain what? ceased. The pain ceased. Oh, you had a pain before yes. now? No, it was while I was there. It there was, was while you were there? Yes. It but just the left. moment I fell under the anointing, it disappeared. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are healed now, you are healed forever. Let's have the last one. I know there are many more. What will happen is you can, you can testify 
uh, uh, during the other sessions, yes. I've had ringing in my ears for over three years now, and then I can't hear anything anymore. And then the ringing has stopped. There's no ringing in my ear anymore. You believe what has... Yes. I had pain in my knee coming to church this evening, and I can't feel the pain Completely anymore. gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, let's just honor that sister. And Praise then. the Lord. Yes. When you mentioned waist pain, that you can even feel the pain, I was there, I have had this pain since last week. If I sit down to stand up will be an issue, I will fall back to the chair. But when you mentioned the issue, I've been checking myself because the pain is no longer there. Okay. Please stand on your feet. I'm no longer slaying I am. your life you are in this place and haven't heard about Jesus and what he can do haven't seen what he has done you are here and you are saying apostle I know that I need Jesus I need to make it right with Jesus or you are here and you are saying apostle I remember giving everything to Jesus but for some reason my life has gone haywire and I need restoration I'm going to count one to five for sake of time. You have just a minute. I'd like you to leave your seat. Please, um, before we receive the final prophetic word, wherever you are, please leave your seat boldly. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. I'd like you to come and stand here very quickly. I'll count one to five. Please run like there's fire on the mountain. Come and stand before Jesus here. One. Run to Jesus. Two. Don't allow anybody to leave you behind. Run. Come to Jesus. He's giving you a new beginning. You don't have to kneel. Please stand for space. Please stand for space. Three. Someone is coming to Jesus here at this conference. He's giving you a new beginning. A new beginning. If you're still running, come. Come. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Hallelujah. Praise the, praise the name of the Lord. I salute every one of you. Thank you for the courage to come. Jesus said, whosoever will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. May I request that you lift your right hand very high above your head. Please say this after me. Say it with faith, believing that Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word that you are all powerful. I believe in your power to save i believe in your power to give me a new beginning i confess jesus as my savior my lord and my king i declare that i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that the power of sin Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus' name. Please keep those hands. Father, we thank you for these ones. You have brought them to yourself. May the grace that keeps, may that grace keep them. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. May you be grounded and established in righteousness. In the name of Jesus. Now you will notice that you were given a card. Please look up. You were given a card by the officials. Here's what I want you to do. Um, as they direct you, you'll be told what to do. Okay, I thought you would feel it here. So please, all of you, to my left, which is your right, I'd like you to go. Let's celebrate them as they go. You'll meet with a few counselors. And you'll be back to your seat. Hallelujah. Can I speak finally over your life? Please stand. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. Let me encourage you to be actively involved in the remaining sessions. There's tomorrow morning. There's tomorrow evening. 
there's um, Saturday morning and then the celebration service. Do well to stretch through. Remember, this is a week for you of spiritual emphasis. And do well to enjoy the worship, the word. Connect with your heart opened. And the Lord will bless you. In Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.